going. That is a big fall. If if over that six weeks I didn't get dividends and I couldn't have reinvested in it, I would have been out. Yeah. Just let you know. Uh, just let you know. I I just hit live, but that's it's it's okay. Just continue on. But I just want you to be aware that. Yeah, uh, that's okay, buddy. Thank yeah. you. Um, but that's all I wanted to say about yeah. it. Like, it it truly is. It's the best of times and the worst of times all wrapped into one. Oh, you you have no idea. This market right now, it's. Just think about this is a, this is my problem. This is the biggest problem I have is that the market is down, and dude, I'll take this problem anytime. This is this yeah, is not it. You know. And you know, but but yeah. not everybody has our mindset. Like you think of you about your your job at the worst of times. Yeah. The, the worst thing for you is to go to war, even yeah. though that's where your skills shine, right? Because you yeah. do all the planning and and. I don't, I don't want to put too fine a point on this, yeah. but you can pretty much dictate who lives and who dies. Yeah. There's nothing more serious than that in this world, and we thank you for your service and doing it. It's not something that I could do, personally. But it's given you the mindset to invest, too. So you have to take the good with the bad. It's like Elon. Does he make some tweets I'd rather he didn't do? Yes. But I'm going to take the good with the bad, because the good outweighs the bad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's this, move on. Yeah, I, I agree. It, it, this is good stuff, man. It's just, I learned so much, uh, so much discussions, and uh, we, we, it's just been a, it's just been an amazing time. You know, just um, can't. A lot of good things happen. Well, one of the things I can say is that, you know, people are fickle. And if you look at everything going on right now, people are putting all their money into the Bitcoin rush and all the crypto stuff because they were in a bull run and the halving is coming up. So that could be a lot of what's happening. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I, do. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So you think money's being shifted to that? I definitely have some feeling that some of it is, yes. You know, I would but, have to agree. Yeah. You know, for people who started uh, investing in Tesla with me from the beginning, yeah, some people are down a lot because they 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 invested, you know, you know almost over a year more than a year now but for those who just started just think about just here's the part that we no one ever talk about what about the people who just start investing with tesla now can you imagine owning tesla at 14 15 dollars or nine dollar eight dollar you know like when we you know when we were back before it to reverse split they they're not having problem <laughs> you know they, because they're not taking the same amount of loss that we have, you know, in terms of percentage-wise and stuff like that, you know. They're, they're like, they're like, what are you guys talking about? I love my, I love Tesla. I love it, you know. <laughs> and uh, they don't see it, you know. It's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I basically just want to start over with it. Yeah. Well, I wish I had more money. Uh, you know, I mean, sadly, I sold all my property, so there's no, I have no more money coming in. But imagine if I have one more home, I get fifty thousand dollar. I take fifty thousand dollar and put it into Tesla. That DCA will come right down, and, and then, then I, everybody's gonna look at it like, what happened? Like, it just right now, you know, I have so many shares, so my DCA it has to be very incremental. It's gonna take time. Uh, it's gonna take time, so there's not much I can do about it. It's just time, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna ride the ship, you know. I'm gonna because it's giving me money. Uh, like, why would I? Why would? This is the part that I, I will never understand. This logic. If 
Tesla is giving me $3,000 a month every month, man. Tesla alone, just Tesla alone. Why would I sell that, man? Why would I sell that? That is just crazy, crazy. That is, I mean, in, in 10 months, it's $30,000. Right. Yeah, it, it, it is nuts. I'm going to go out on a limb here. Yeah. And this is changing tack again. I'm going to say the distribution for Tesla or this month that gets paid early next month, I think um, X day or declaration day is the fifth of the uh, third of the fourth. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to pay 62 to 65 cents. Let's see if my theory holds out. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to win all its trade. This whole month is going to win all its trade. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, here's the but crazy part. Um, if you take three thousand dollar time twenty four months, that's seventy two thousand dollar. My entire mm -hmm. Tesla Tesla portfolio is eighty thousand dollar. So in twenty four yep. thousand in twenty four months, it, it has not paid me. Not it, it has not paid me three thousand. Just think about that. It, it, it's three thousand or more. Last month, this month alone in March, I got, I got, I got more. Uh, but, yeah. but so just think about it. The bare minimum is three thousand. That's the number I use. And so, in twenty-four months, this whole thing is paid off. And guess what? I'm already, I'm already deep into the the twenty-four month cycle. You know, it's just crazy. Uh, people don't don't see that. They're, they, it's just. When it's when it doesn't pay me dividends, then it become a different conversation. That is a conversation to be had, but that's not true yet because it it been paying me dividends, you know. Yeah. Does anybody remember how much uh, the dividend was when Tesla was at fourteen dollars before the uh, back four or five, maybe six months ago? Yeah, look, I can tell you that because. I keep a record of all of that sort of stuff because spreadsheet nerd, I you know. Can't look it up right now because I, I'm driving. <laughs> um, give me a sec. I have got it open. I've just got to find the right uh, thing. So we want Tesla dividend log. All right, guys, um, I'm going to move to a uh, live show. We're in the general discussions. So I'm going to move everybody to live show. Or, yeah, or we're paying in the light too. Yeah, just switch over the live show, everyone. Yep. So a tire on dividends released uh, released the interviews. He did. He yes. Did. He did. I got something to watch tomorrow. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch it because when I drove here, he released it when I was driving, so I couldn't. I I didn't. It, it came out on my alert. It was like forty, like I don't know, like around four something, three four o'clock. Not uh, four o'clock when he released it. Hmm. It's a good interview. Yeah, he's a good man. I look, I look forward to listening like to him because he's going to ask the right questions. <laughs> he the right questions. Well, he's not, he's not, not, he's not jaded. You know, he, he's. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I love to, I love to ask him. You know, how, how's it feel? How's it feel to talk to celebrity, man? You made it. You made it in the land of YouTube. Next thing you know, he's going to be interviewing Mr. Beast, and and next thing you know, he's going to do retired dividends. Uh, you know, uh, what do you call? Uh, what's that Korean TV show? The Korean show that where you, they get killed. I just blank out. So, oh, I know what. You, uh, I can't think of the name of it. I watched it a couple. Of where they wear the mask, the square and rectangle. Quick game. Quick game. Uh, yeah. What is it? Quick game. Squid game. A uh, squid game. Yeah, squid game. Uh, 
yeah. Yeah, so the the next step for retired dividend is is have a YouTube video on retired dividend Squid Game style like Mr. Beast did. <laughs> And, and Mr. Beast well, was giving away like a million dollars and stuff of that, you know, like giving away Toyota cars and uh, retired dividend need to give us some Tesla, you know. Did you see the, uh, did you uh, see the, the interview with the finance lady, not that retired on dividends did, but the other person? Well, there's Jay and I there's... saw. The, I yeah, the defiance. The Defiant CEO? Yeah, yeah, that's CEO. Looked like he was very anxious. Her chair was like moving back and forth a lot. So I guess she's not used to, to uh, interviews. She looked nervous. <laughs> she shouldn't be nervous. I wonder, I wonder uh, if she's in New York City. That'd be cool to meet her. And uh, just. Yeah, it'd be cool to living see. Living a dream, man. Who's living a dream? Me? Yeah, you go going to this party. You're going to meet these people. <laughs> yeah, the, who knows, man? Who knows, man? Uh, but I just want to see something else than a bunch of Marine going yut yut. <laughs> you know. It's important. Huh? Oh, by the way, guys, um, has anybody gotten the uh, Peppy shirt yet? The Rec Share shirt? No, I don't think so. I, that's one of the questions I'm going to ask him. I say, what's going on? Why don't you give people this shirt? No, it's good. It's good. All right. Um... All right, I'm gonna switch over here, and it's time right now. Wow, that was quick. Let me uh, let me click on my portfolio real quick. Just something because it's gonna time out. What's your topic? I don't have I don't have a topic, dude. I never have a topic. No, today we're gonna do. Uh, member portfolio review if people want to talk about it otherwise yeah there's no topics man we, we never had a topic i mean i have like you know a few things i want to say and stuff like that and but yep it's always it's always it's always uh the audience driven topics you know that's the format yeah and then i don't hi uh, let's let me do my introductions and then uh, uh, my little thing here and then we'll talk about what interesting and other member Tesla plan time to panic why, why would he even ask a question about time to panic loss and confuse <laughs> that 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 is a very uh, <laughs> that's a very uh, good evening Matt all right Let's start. Three, two, three, two, one. Start. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channels, and it's good to see everyone back online. It's good to see Discord is kicking again, and you know you having good Discord when when people start focusing on the conversation we're talking about, you know. And uh, so I'm really happy. I'm really happy with. Uh, our directions, our futures, and uh, you know, it, everything is, is great. When I started this journey, I couldn't, I could not imagine a million year that um, on on April first, I'm gonna go to this social event with Rex Shear in a million year. I have no idea. Um, and so I, I love this kind of, you know, I I dream about this stuff when I was in the military, when I was. You know, floating around, you know, in theater somewhere on the ships. Now I got an office job. You know, it's a different job. You know, it's you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not hooking and jabbing, uh, you know, deploying somewhere. But back then, man, I was sitting around. I always watch like, what is it like to be uh, in New York City? What is it like to hang out with all these uh, big wits? And you know, you watch all these movies, and you're like, this must be great to talk about stocks and bonds and trades and stuff like that investment. It just sounds, it just sounds so cool, you know, from a military guy. It just sounds amazing. 
and and I want I always want to be part of that. Um, and uh, I just now I'm now I feel like I'm a part of that universe a little bit, and it's just it's such a great feeling. But here's, here's a couple of things I want to share. This is my monologue uh, for the morning. Let me switch uh, my music off and uh, my intro music. First of all, I love my intro music. I, I was debating about, like, I got to get rid of my intro music because that's what killed me for monetization. And, uh, but the more I think about it, I just don't really care. <laughs> I just don't care. Because that's my intro music. That's my culture. That's my, that's my, uh, that's who I am. I just remember my journey, my path, and, you know, it's, it's not that important. Uh, it's, it's just not that important in my life. Uh, uh, with that, I just want to say, hey, you know, uh, I, I kind of figured out this monetization things and subscribe things and this algorithm thing. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to be a good YouTuber. And uh, so, you know, you know, you can subscribe, you can comment, you can do whatever you want, but you don't have to. Uh, because I'm, I'm not, I, I don't want your money. Uh, you don't need to give me your money, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's not that important, you know. But, but what, what, what's important for me is that I get to share my message, my journey to the people who actually want to, to see it, you know, who actually follow and, and track it, and, and to help them to be financially independent, so they can, uh, so they can have a balanced life, you know, uh, so they're not stressing our work and stuff like that. Uh, I'm in New York City. You ain't missing nothing, Philly Fox. Hey, Philly Fox, hey, why don't you come down and grab a drink, man? I'll buy you a drink, Philly Fox. If you, if you, in, if you in Manhattan, I'll buy you a drink. I'm, com I'm, com I'm going. I'm going to be there. So, uh, and that would be great asking for you. But when you come, go get the seafood. Definitely. Definitely. I definitely gotta eat. I'm definitely gonna eat some good food. Hi. Right. How's it going guys? Uh tune in to watch all you chosen poverty in real time. What what's that mean? All of you choose poverty in real time. How's it going guys? Tun tune in to watch all of you choose poverty in real time. I have no idea what that means. I are, are you are, is that haiku? Is that haiku? For That's something? a negative comment towards you. That's what that is. Oh, it is. <laughs> well, how, uh, um, basically means you're choosing being poor in real time to watch your watch your stocks fall. It's oh, just really? one of those haters you gotta ignore. Ah, uh, yep. okay, yeah. So we're gonna try a different approach. Well, uh, and I really appreciate. It. Thank you for the comments, but uh, uh, goodbye. All right. I don't know how to do this. Uh, how user on this channel? How do how do you ban somebody? All right. I guess I guess I don't know how to do it. Beat the heck out of me. All right. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, this is a great, f I, sh I should have done this a long time ago. I, I should just, just ban everybody, you know, like as soon as, as soon as come up. And uh, I, I realize now that the internet, the internet is kind of, the internet is kind of weird. You know, like this is why I can see why people want to be private and stuff like that. Because there's people out there, it doesn't really matter what I own or what I invest. Um, they're not going to take the time trying to figure out because they're looking at they're looking at they're looking at it from a very negative point of view. It doesn't matter what what it is. So uh, my stock could be doing really really well. I could be I, there's no red, no nothing. Here's my portfolio, and it could be all green. And yet there's going to find something to pick on my stocks. I, I just come to the conclusion that is just the way it is. It is nothing to do it because they don't take the time to ask. Can you imagine if if one of you figured out how to win the lottery? You know what? You know, uh, on a consistent basis, you know what I want to do? I want to ask you how you do it. If if you can get a gold medal from the Olympics, instead of trying to chop some, uh, hit somebody kneecap and uh, ice skating, I would ask them how do they do it? You know, uh, because that's that's the that's the winning attitude. The winning attitude is is figuring out how people do it. 
and then you figure, and then you do it, and then you uh, then you try to do it yourself, you know, and and achieve objective. That's that's crazy. Um, but they don't they don't come they don't come with that uh, that mindset. They come in with that what everything I'm doing is wrong and I'm gonna fail, and somehow they're gonna be white knight and save me. Uh, yeah, if yeah, it's it's crazy. Well, good luck, good luck, uh, because I'm doing it. And what they don't understand is this, man. What they don't understand is this. I'm an immigrant. I came to the United States with nothing. Not just me, but my entire family, relative, cousin. Doesn't matter. We all came to the United States with nothing. With nothing. Just the thought, the mere thought that I generate this much income. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Just the mere thought that I'm going to have, uh, like somebody asked me, uh, you know, hey, have you talked about Jay and stuff? Like that? I say, I keep telling them, like, no, man, I'm a nobody. Dude, I am literally a nobody. I, I, I have no no background, no skill, no talent, no nothing. I'm just a guy who's making YouTube video. And uh, uh, you know, it just, it's just crazy that that people, they don't understand that I start with nothing. Just think about nothing. And with my first job, I joined the Marine Corps. I'm a private. What? How much pay do you think a private get paid? Private. <laughs> and uh, and now I'm here. Now I'm here. I'm, my portfolio is growing. I'm getting six thousand dollars a month, uh, and continue to grow. I'm going to get ten thousand dollars a month by the end of the year. This is crazy. It's just crazy that. That they, they that they're somehow you know like, peep man, dude, you don't realize how how lucky I am. I'm so lucky, yeah, and 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 to tell me that I'm gonna fail, like, no, you don't know my journey. You don't know you don't know our journey. You don't know our path. You don't you don't know how we got here. Just the fact that I'm I have this much share. Just imagine just the fact that I'm doing investment having a, a backup plan, that is unbelievable. That alone is unbelievable. That alone is, is, is the journey. It's like unbelievable. Uh, I'm so happy, so positive, you know, so I've been so, I'm thrilled. That's crazy that, that you are, you know, some people out there debating what, <laughs> uh, you guys agree or disagree with that? Or what do, what do you all take on that? You know, like, yeah. You're 100 percent correct. Yeah, thank you, Watchman. Wow. Uh, first of all, I love your logo, by the way. Uh, I don't know. I, I love your logo. Thank you, Watchman. Yeah. I love the movie. Oh, you do? Okay. Uh, oh, I yeah. thought you, I thought you more like the comic books, but you in the movie. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, I agree as well. I agree as well. I mean. That what they don't know is uh, you are technically a millionaire. You just can't touch it yet. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really it, people just people just bored online. They want to complain about something. That's all they want to do. Wait until I cash my TSP. Wait until I cash all my benefits. Uh, uh, in addition to this, I'm not worried about me. This portfolio is not even for me. This portfolio is for my girl. I built this for my girl, so this way she doesn't have to worry for the rest of her life. I, I can afford to pay her to do anything. You know, like the the idea that I'm I'm raising this money to give someone I love, someone I care about, man, it's unbelievable. Knowing that she's gonna be taken care of. Here's the crazy part. I don't know about other pension, other job. If I die, she still get my money. She still get half of my money. And all my benefits. So uh and you know, so that that's it's so I'm, I'm I'm very blessed, very very blessed, and uh, but this portfolio I'm building this for her. Um, so when I walk away from this planet, um, and I want her to be taken care of, I want her to I want her to have a house, I want her to have everything she wants, and you know, and she just enjoy life, uh, and 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 that is my gift as a good as as a as a husband, as a friend, as someone you, I love, you know. That's my that's my gift. That's it. You know, I, I may not be able to save everybody in this world, but I'm gonna save one person. That one person is my my wife. 
And hey, quick question. Yeah. Is her her response is not going to be, "Oh, that's cute," is it? Well, yeah, she. This is this is cute to her. She doesn't need this money. <laughs> she literally does not need this money. Um, yeah, I've been I've been I've been blessed. I you know I marry I marry the right girl, man, with the right income. So she she, she look at this kind of like, oh, that's amazing. You no, know, one one thing one thing though. Here's something I I, I kind of miscalculate, and this is why the situation I'm in, uh, the, the the dilemma I'm in. So when when I when I was going through life, I I calculate everything for me, like for me. But once, uh, hey, do you want to say something? Oh, but once I you know once I made a decision that I wanna I wanna take care, you know, I wanna be her in my life. I want her to be. You know, I want her to have all the benefits and all those things. My life should make a dramatic turn. So the problem was uh, a couple of years ago, uh, after COVID, I made a decision to to get rid of all my rental property because it was it was just killing me. Right, and so I went from a very doing really well financially just to like done. I'm I'm no no longer. I'm just living off my salary and fine. And um. And and the problem is, I didn't think about I didn't think about uh, uh, you know all these other things you know that taking care of like when how many of you got married recently? Did you think about you know like the future? You know when you when I think of the future, I was thinking about like just taking care of me. You know, <laughs> but when you all of a sudden when you think of the future and when you have to add the the, the other person. Then you realize that it's it's not really, I'm not really setting myself up for financial success. Okay, that's where my journey came in. That's when I was like, I'm going to start doing investment. I'm going to start raise money because I don't want to, I don't want to go work as an Uber driving. I don't want to do door dashes to get additional money. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to retire and retire and just not work anymore. But uh, you know, when I take off my uniform, it'd be done, done. I don't want to do anything more work. Well, you know, my initial plan was to do that. So, you know, that's why that's why a lot of people, you know, uh, when I first started off uh, a few years ago, my plan was to retire and not to work. And I told my boss, I say, hey, I'm done. I'm peace out. I'm not going to work. Uh, this is great. But once you once you do the math and add the the second person, and then I came to realization that my, my life situation have changed. And not, that's why I'm still working. That's the only reason why I'm still working. Because my life situation have changed and I have no other income because I sold all my rental property. I have no other income. Uh, yeah, I'm debt free, I'm all free. I still have my house, I still have my car, I have multiple cars. Um, I sold my boat, I sold my motorcycles. So, you know, I sold a lot of stuff. And, uh, and I just, you know, like, but I, but now I, I'm, I have to go to work because I want to be a good dad, a good father, a good husband, you know. I want to start a family, you know, and all those things. You know, I want to, I want to be, you know, I'm thinking about it. I wasn't thinking about that a few years ago, but now I'm thinking about it. Now it's just, now it's crazy, right? So as a result, you got you to, gotta like, look at the other person. And so that's why I'm saying, if I leave now and try to find a job, that's crazy. Number one, I'm going to end up leaving that job anyway. Number two, um, I, I probably have to start over. I'm going to have to start over. Why would I do that when I can still be a Marine and still get paid a lot of money? I'm going to continue doing that. You know, I'm going to continue to do that and leave on my own term when I can, so while I can. So that's that's where I'm at. And, and uh, so why did I tell you all this? And, you know, because what happened is, um, you know, what happened is I tried to keep my information private a little bit you know i'm trying to be as private as possible and uh, i didn't want to come out you know i didn't want to like people to know who i am you know i i have like uh, uh you know i have this channel and have video gaming channel i try to keep a low profile you think it's crazy you should see the video gaming channel there's some crazy people out there right i don't even show my face in that channel like you know they'll probably hunt me down you know like that there's some crazy people in video game and um and so I, uh, so I try to keep it private as much as possible. And, uh, but obviously, you know, it didn't work out that way because, you know, uh, you know, there's people out there, you know, it's just, 
what I don't know what the what the internet term was when they when they revealed your information. I I forgot. I just blank out. And so so now my information now in the public now. And so I'm like, you know what? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad it came out. It, it's literally probably one of the best things ever happened. <laughs> it's like the opposite. Yeah. Oh, dock. And yeah. So there's, there's people out there. They just dock me and they said, "Hey, look, there's a video of this guy. Uh, here's Khmer. You know. Yeah. So essentially, it is what it is. You know. Like, I'm a marine officer. Uh, you know. I. Uh, I'm. You know. And I. Uh, I. I make video about. Uh, you know, about financial investment. That's all I talk about is financial investment. I don't talk about anything else. Nothing controversial except money. And uh, you know, I want to I want to help a community to get rich and make money, and uh, and and the way I see it, you know, and so yeah, so I've been I just been going that journey, and um, but now I'm now I'm so happy. It it, it literally like like a whole shoulder un, unpack, because before that, I mean, just simple thing as drinking a cup of coffee. My name used to be on a cup of coffee. Uh, right now, this is uh, this is from. Uh, Harry Potter. I went to the Harry Potter Museum, but anyway, there's a. Uh, I used to have my name on it because if you're in the military, you put your name everywhere. Like names, literally everywhere. Uh, hey, buddy. Yeah. I don't think you're streaming on Discord. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, let me switch it. Thank you. And so, yeah, it's been a, it's just been a great time, you know. Like I I just put my name, in, you know, it's just. So, because I'm doing live streaming, I have to hide my name around. I have to make sure nothing shows. So, every time I click on something, I got to make sure that nothing is revealing. Like, my personal information is not out there. I have to go through and double check everything. Like, here's, here's the temperature, NBA. Is, it, is my name on anywhere? But now, guess what? It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'll tell you, such a relief. Such a relief. So, the best relief is... Um, I never signed up for any newsletter. One of the reasons why I don't sign up for newsletter because I don't want to reveal my information, like uh, like uh, alert message from from Defiance, from Yahoo, or from wherever. Uh, there was an event that take place in Atlanta. I happened to be in Atlanta, but you got to sign up and register. It. And guess what? I, I I didn't go. I mean, literally, I'm one building away, and I couldn't even attend the SCHD Think or Swim conference. And I want I want to I want to attend it free. It was free, and I want to I want to learn how to use Thinkorswim, learn how to do option trading, and um, and I'm essentially a block away. I, I didn't I still didn't go because I didn't want to give my personal information away. But guess what? Since all that is out in the open, it doesn't really matter now. So guess what? My sh that whole pack just like such a relief. You have no idea how much relief is. For, for the the people who did this, they think they like, they think they pulled someone, they pulled something out of the rug or something on me. And they actually did me a favor. Like now I'm free. Like I feel free. I feel so much relief. Guess what? Because of that, I signed up for um, to go uh, to attend a uh, an event that's hosted by RecShare in New York City. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna get a hotel. I got a hotel already. And I already registered, I, I, you know, so I'm going there, and I'm gonna go check it out, have some, uh, have a cold beer with some of these guys. I have no idea, you know, if they recognize me, great. If they don't recognize me, that's fine. And uh, but I, I, I always want to see this world, because when you know, when when you're in the military, you don't get to see this world. It's a different world. So I'm watching on TV. I saw Wolf of Wall Street. I I see all these money movie. I see all these documentary. And you watch like the stock market is down. I remember when somebody talked about the stock market down in 2008. Um, I remember, you know, 9/11 when you know they talk about the World Trade Center. All these things, I, I, I don't have, I don't have that experience. I don't have that life. So there's no way for me to understand that life. And uh, but man, I, I'm just so excited now to, to be part of this, part of this journey. You know, so it's, it's just, it's just been amazing for me. I've been so happy. Yeah. All right. Uh, just like I say, my show does not have any formats at all. But today, uh, we're talking about uh, members' uh, portfolio review. I haven't looked at the portfolio. I should have looked at it prior to me click on it. Uh, but we were busy talking about Tesla. And, uh, and then 
we're going to go to the member portfolio. Let me just see if anybody posts anything. If you want to talk about your portfolio, go ahead and post it and come on Discord. Let me know. And uh, preferably, you come on Discord. And there's a couple of people post their portfolio. Uh, we can talk about it. And, uh, and yeah, we can talk about it. Come here, make sure you pay a visit to Wall Street. I will. Uh, I'm definitely going to go to Wall Street and take a look. Um, I'm going to make a video about it. Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video. I'm walking around. I'm like, hey, here's Wall Street, man. I don't know if they let me record when I'm inside, so I'll be respectful, but I will, <laughs> I will check it out. All right. Before we talk about portfolio review, let's talk about just my portfolio in general, just what's going on with the state. Let's, t let's talk about Yahoo and uh, YouTube real quick. Let's look at the market. All right. So the market is completely down. It's just crazy. Uh, the S&P 500 is down. The NASDAQ is down. So everything is down. Not only down, but they're down by a lot, like 30 cents or 14 points. I don't know how you read this thing. Is it 0 .30, 0 0.29? Or is it, or people should say 14 points. Down 14 points, down 49 points. Uh, and the Russell, man, is down like 1.96, almost 2%. Uh, the Russell just came down uh, hard. All right, so when, when I look at that, I was like, man, this is not, this is not a good market at all. And uh, so and then, then I just look at my watch list. And when you look at my watch list, uh, well, Google's up. I saw a YouTube video, somebody talk about like the Magnificent 7 is still up, like Microsoft up, Google, and all these companies up, but the rest of the market is down. Uh, so the next one up is, I don't know, I forgot what LAC is. Um, that's a Chinese company, that's BYD. So Amazon's up, Google's up. Uh, do I have Microsoft in here? I think Amazon, I think Microsoft is up. Um, Apple is up, you know. Except Tesla, uh, Tesla. So pretty much the Magnificent Seven, they're doing really well, but everything else is down. So what caused that? I don't know. Does anybody know what caused it? Um, like why? Why does one thing go up and everything else is going down? That's that's a that's a question. Uh, yeah, if somebody know the answer, please let me know. I would love to hear your answer. But I, I don't have an answer for it. All right. And. Uh, So my, uh, all right, so that's my watch list, and let's go to my portfolio. Uh, you know, I, I kind of read this wrong, because somebody explained to me that I read this wrong. Now I, I'm at a point, I don't know how to read this. I, 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 I hope somebody, can somebody, if somebody have Charles Schwab, can explain to me what my portfolio. So I, essentially my account is $72,000, so that's how much I put in. I thought my account value was $184,000. So in other words, if, if everything is perfect, everything is green, and so this negative 38,000, um, it's essentially is 184,000. That's what I thought, I, that, that in my mind, I'm thinking that's the account value. So it's $184,000 minus the $38,000 or 20% loss, 184,000 minus 20% thousand, that's the market value, 145,000. So out of 145,000, 72,000 of which is Charles Schwab money. Not my money, but Charles Schwab money. And then this is my money. Yeah. So. Hey, uh, come here. Yeah. Uh, I posted something in the Discord chat. Yeah. I mean, not, you know, our, the, the live chat. Yeah. And this is a post from Lion. He explains pretty much what today is about. All right, markets take a dump today. Produce producer price index PPI is hotter than expected. A rise of 0.6 percent in February from previous month. It is exhibiting inflation pressure still persists, while weekly jobless claims are lower than expected. So far, the incoming data support the Fed not cut its benchmark interest rate. We may continue seeing more selling pressure on equities in coming days, weeks. Volatility index in the market is ticking up from Lion. All right, Lion, 
it's lying here. Why don't we? Why don't we just ask him instead of me reading? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> what the heck? All right, Lions, you here? That was earlier. Yeah. Oh, uh, sorry. Somebody calling me. I was doing stuff here. Yeah, yeah. So we're reading your message, man. So, can you explain why why the market is down today? Oh yeah. Uh, I think I posted something earlier today explaining some analysis about the market. So there's been some news about the PPI uh, production. Um, a producer price index, sorry, uh, that's uh, basically increased, which showing that there's still inflation pressure in the market. And uh, basically, this is an early indication that showing that inflation is still in place because once the PPI is higher, it usually affects the CPI. Uh, because when the, the price to produce uh, goods is going up, usually it's passed on to the consumer to pay for this increase, and this is uh, affecting the CPI. What it means is basically that inflation is still sticky, is uh, the Fed is looking and watch uh, carefully on, you know, on all these indicators, and the market usually pay attention to this type of uh, news coming out. And when they see that, they say, oh, what the heck, they're going to probably stay hawkish mm -hmm. uh, or maybe decide not to cut rate. Uh, currently looking at maybe June time frame when they're going to do only one cut for 25 basis points. But if we continue getting those uh, other than expected economy indicators coming in, it's more convinced the Fed governors to maybe just stay on the sideline without reducing interest rate. Uh, when the market sees that the VIX uh, spiked today a little bit, uh, that has an impact to equities. And when I'm watching the bond market as a result, is basically selling off where the yields goes up. Mm -hmm. So there's a money flow goes in the market as a result of this news of the PPI, where money flow from equities into other asset classes, kind of like a, find a safety from this type of situation. So that's the reason we saw today uh, the market was hectic and uh, getting a setting pressure as a result. Yeah, well, I, well, I appreciate the explanation, man. Um, I, I have to be sure. honest, I probably understand maybe 20% of what you just said. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, in layman term, is basically saying that inflation is sticky mm -hmm. and the interest rate uh, environment probably going to be higher for longer. And that impacts the equities because equity is a risky type of assets so usually institutions they rebalance their uh, holdings by moving into safer asset so and that, that has an impact on equities bonds and all that stuff should be increased right now yeah so the yield is increasing but mm -hmm. the price decreasing so it's working in inverse direction in bond mm -hmm. when you have high supply of bonds the price goes down, and there, therefore, investor requests higher yield in order to pay for this reduction. So that's what's happening. The bond market basically going with higher yield, and the equity is getting under pressure. It's not. It's not all equity. It's. It's just. It seems like it's only a certain group of people. Group of equity. Yeah, so some some holdings they are they calling defense. Some of those that they are defense type of sectors, they uh, getting some money flows from other riskier assets. Usually, growth stock getting the hit the most in this type of environments, yeah. and uh, more value stocks uh, getting more inflows of money, uh, which uh, basically keep them uh, in a good shape. And it's also going to cost more to borrow money or if you want to buy a Tesla car or mortgage or anything like that. I mean, yeah. interest rates aren't going to come down any too, any time soon. 
And the overall market is going to be paying for it to borrow money and just reduce economic activity on the uh, in the regular industrial Ex economy. Exactly. The cost of capital stay high. So if you want to take auto loan, if you uh, finance your house or take mortgage, then the interest rate is higher. So that uh, reduces the economic activity as a result. Uh -huh. But the interest rate environment is higher. If the Fed will not cut rates, or if we continue seeing inflation pressure in the system, in the economy, that uh, may, they may be more hawkish. They may say, hey guys, sorry, it's not going to be in June. Maybe it's going to be September. And they can continue pushing the red cut further and further away. And that's kind of the risk the market is seeing. When there is a risk, there is uncertainty, yeah. then the spike and the VIX, which is the fear gauge, we talked about volatility, is higher at that point. The VIX is spiking and the equity gets uh, selling pressure as a result. Yeah. So is, is what, what is causing Tesla to come down, in your opinion? Tesla is uh, one of the growth uh, type of asset uh, uh, equity. And usually, uh, you know, when you have a growth type of investment, the, the price in the market is based on the cash flow of future uh, of that company. So your investor willing to pay premium for high growth companies that's the reason the valuation is high, the PE is higher, the price per earning is higher. Mm -hmm. Because you're willing to pay more for the stock, knowing that in the future, it, it's, it's going to do quite well. Uh, and and, and when, when the environment in the market is, um, when the cost of capital is going up, or if there is a news of inflation, then the buying power of the dollar is depressing as a result. So usually then um, the, the cash flow from the high growth company is getting eroded as a result because it's, they have to cut prices of the product and, and the services. In our case, due to competition and due to um, uh, the, the pricing power, Tesla reduced prices, you know, and that's not the news. Uh, I mean, this everybody knows in China and other places, they had to cut prices due to competition and also uh, due to the cost of capital. Mm -hmm. And they have to find a way to reduce cost in order to increase their profit margin. Every growth company has a, been impacted as a result of the interest rate environment. If it's higher because the cost of capital is high and they have to pay higher wages as a return, return because this is an inflationary environment. So that's the reason companies that uh, ha they are very high octane of growth, like Tesla and others, they're getting hit the most when there is a situation like this. Um, yeah, so... That, that's that's the reason in the beginning. But if the company continue to grow exponentially, at the end of the day, they will uh, catch up. Then they they can show that the earning is growing, and the price per share will continue to stay high, and co an investor will continue willing to pay for the stock because it's a growth company, which provide future. Uh, you know, good future in the f yeah. for, for the product and services. So, uh, okay, well, uh, Bill, go ahead. You want to say something? Yeah, you can also expect uh, consumer products to go up because the uh, tightening of the credit credit card uh, interest rates will go up. Fuel costs will go up a little bit, along with uh, utilities. Yes, yeah, so the market is basically reacting to increase in uh, producer price index and consumer price index 
and the fact that uh, that 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 the market, that the economy is still growing at a faster pace, which showing that it's hotter than expected. Yeah. What the Fed would like to see, he would like to cool the economy, right? In order to fight inflation, and he's been using this with high inf high interest rate by increasing the benchmark between 525% to 5.5% Fed uh, benchmark interest rate. And by doing it and doing QT, which is quanti quantitative tightening by reducing the balance sheet, he was trying basically to cool the economy. So that way he can fight the inflation, reduce it to 2%. But if the PPI continue to go up, if the CPI continue to go up, if the wages continue to get better and better, people getting uh, raises higher than the inflation rate, then that means you have more inflation pressure in the system. And that will keep the Fed fighting the dragon, fighting the inflation. Yeah. To con and, and what I mean fighting is by keeping the interest rate higher for longer. And what it means, the consumer will have to feel the pain if they are leveraged, if they're taking loans, if they need to pay debt. They, they have to service the debt and they, it's going to cause also layoffs. Some companies will decide to cut the, the labor as a result. If the cost of capital is higher and the profit margin is shrinking, then companies will have to tighten their belt. They have to cut their labor workforce as a result. So, so that's the reason uh, the market is taking a notice of this type of news and you're getting uh, all the indices like uh, S&P 500, NASDAQ, uh, usually the small cap uh, also, the, they are the first to get hit because the smaller, they are less liquidity. So they're getting impacted the, the most as well. That's what you see as a result. Yes. No, I yeah, appreciate and, it. I'm sorry, go ahead. And you'll also see that in the general uh, economy, the cost of transportation or movement of products will go up, whereas the rates uh, given to the uh, the trucking or transportation companies will go down because there's more, going to be less produced, uh, product produced in the overall economy. So you're basically going to see the trucking industry or the, and the shipping industry as a whole a struggle to uh, uh, make profits in this type of environment. In fact, we'll probably see more trucking companies go out of business or go back into bankruptcy. Some of the uh, brokerages that have uh, that uh, broker break from the shippers to the, uh, the trucking companies will probably go, bro uh, go bankrupt as well or be profitable. Well, of course, everybody's one of the profitable. Well, Lions, you are... Uh, you, uh, um, you need to mute your, your mic. You open open uh, broadcasting. Go ahead. Uh, Bill, continue on. Okay. Uh, just in general, the yeah. Uh, what the Fed is trying to do is slow down the economy so the stuff that the inflation rate will come down. But uh, the side effect is it's going. To some products are going to become more expensive. More people are going to make less money because of the uh, redu uh, increased interest rates and the reduction in the workforce. Uh, I think that's what there are. And are the uh, overall production of the economy in itself. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate the, uh, the information. Uh, there's a question here. This one is, uh, Claude, are you there? I don't know if you can answer this question. Um, somebody asked, I'm trying to find his question. I just went back a couple, uh, hit bottom and then potentially swinging back up. I'm trying to find his question. Uh, Claude, are you there by any chance? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Yeah, so, I was uh, just looking at it last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw bearish. Bearish movement has been, you know, indicators that I use have been bearish for a while. Uh, because actually what I did was I had put a post in the options trading section. Yep. Is and there? I put in parentheses, I said, these are internal thoughts that I'm having with myself yeah. about Tesla. I looked at and I actually indicated what Yieldmax was doing as far as their strikes. And then today I followed up on that same post and posted the positions that I put on. I'm looking through it right now. Uh, what, what time period is so I can see the graph with you? So this morning... Uh, it would have been last night while you was talking. So if you go back to eleven twenty-five a.m. this today, my follow-up. That was this morning. Time. That was the, yeah. That was the follow-up. Yeah, yeah, that was the follow-up. Yep. Are right, you click on that? And you'll see. Uh, yeah. If you can, if you can drag that. Yeah. Okay. So let me speak on that real quick. Let me mm -hmm. get back to. So give give uh, people a quick orientations. Uh, you have different color code. So on the right side, you gotta understand. There's a lot of new people here, more so than you know than Discord. Discord, they they have seen talk to you. Uh, so 164, 165, 168. Everything number here is on the right side. Is the strike price? Uh, I mean, or the price? Um, That's the actual price. The yeah. actual price. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the green line and. Uh, can you explain the green line, purple line? Yeah. These are the channels. So basically, that channel that you see of the green and purple lines yeah. and the dotted black line in the center is basically the mean. Yep. The purple lines represent one standard deviation to the upside and downside. Yep. And the green lines represent two standard deviations to the upside and downside. Yep. So the mean is statistic term uh so if you never take statistic class just think it's like the moving average or it's like an average but yeah. it's not average it's a mean it's a different different numbers but just think this is the average and this is when he said one deviation i mean it's one off from the average uh from the the, the middle all okay? right so uh the current price right now this is yesterday so that was 175 current price um no 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 so that 175 right there, that yeah. line, that black line, that's okay. you don't see that because the I'm just focusing on one small piece of the chart. Okay. But that is actually a Fibonacci level that we broke through. Oh. It held there for a little while, but it broke through. What 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 level? I So for those for those technical geeks out there, yeah. they they know the term Fib Fibonacci. Uh -huh. And that is the retracement. That's like the 23%, 23.6% retracement at 175 which it held for a little while you see the candles bouncing up and down yeah off of that but it, it just gave way once it came back to the mean that last little candle it, it continued on with its drop yeah right here just this yeah. is the last green and it just went downhill after that yeah yeah all right so, so what what's the current price is essentially what, what we're looking at here Right now, Tesla is trading at 162 and a half. Yeah. That's what it closed at today. So yeah. this morning, when I took that snapshot, uh, because the print, the shot before that didn't have their purple block in it. Yeah. It had the gold block, which was, I was talking about yield max. Yeah. It looked like everything is coming down. And there's no, I yeah. mean, the momentum is coming down fast too. It's not like it's slow. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. and at some point it has to curve back up, but the momentum is still coming straight, coming down almost like a 60 degree slope, you know? Yeah. I mean, let me go to a five day, uh, five day moving. I mean, it's like, it's, it just dropped, you know, in the last three days tremendously. Yeah. Could this be the well, correction that? These analysts being at, talking about the last week or two. Well, see, this is the thing. Uh, I'm looking at the smaller time frames because it's going to happen there first before it shows up in the daily. So, looking at the one hour, the four hour, the thirty minutes, you will see 
major downturns in those first before it shows up on a daily and everybody sees it. And that's what I believe, let me see, this particular chart is a four-hour view. So you can see where Yield Max has their stuff in the gold, the 183, 185, 187. Those for those for tomorrow will be golden. Yeah. And another another thing, if you want to be a geek, I mean, obviously, you can always ask Claude uh, for, <laughs> you know, he, he can give you some <laughs> answer. But but uh, uh, so Kathy Wood, our convention. So if you go to arc.com, I think Matt just post something. Let's let's go to that website just for laugh and giggle. And uh and they got some detail, uh, and I mean, they did the research for you already, all right? So you don't have to do any crazy research. They love Tesla. They they love Tesla. They have a whole uh, thesis on uh, on Tesla. I don't know, I don't know where it is. We got to do some research here. Uh, matter of fact, I saw a paper. It, maybe it's a white paper uh, on Tesla. There, there's a analysis on Tesla. I read it. I mean. But somebody send me the actual paper. Um, I want hey, to come here. Yes, sir. But they they actually do the research for you. Yep. And they put in it their Monte Carlo analysis, and they give a low, a medium, and a high as to what their expected price is. And I think the minimum time frame is like five years for them. Yeah. But they give you all of that. You don't have to pay for it. You just have to go to their website and download it. Yeah. You can download their their spreadsheet and you can put your own um, thoughts and figures and all that sort of stuff into it. And it will spit you out um, their analysis of what you're thinking. Like nobody else in the world does this. It's free of charge. They want to be transparent about it. It's amazing that they do it, and I'm thankful. Yeah, you just come to this website. Uh, this is and play around, find what you want to find. They, uh, our convention love Tesla. Kathy would love Tesla. She believed this thing going to be two, three thousand dollar share in about four or five years. Uh, why? Why she's so bullish on it? Because it, it, it's a market disruptor. It's the leading. You know, it's it's a leading um, you know in the AI field, autonomous for vehicle, uh, in terms of uh, taxi. Uh, no one can compete once it go live on taxi. Uh, it's gonna dominate that market, and and there's so many things that she talked about. You know, from from all these services that come in, the battery, the robot, the you know the uh, you know the solar system. There's just so many things going on with Tesla that we're still at the early stage, it hasn't come out, but once it come out, it's just gonna destroy everything. And this is what's gonna happen with Tesla, and this is what happened to every, okay, so let me look at five years and I'll show you what happened. When I, I bought my car somewhere around this window here, and I knew it was gonna explode. And it's like, damn, this thing exploded and it split. It went to a thousand share, and then it came down and it split to 400. But I bought my car somewhere around this window here. and. And as soon as I jump in my Tesla, I fell in love. I knew that this is the future. Like, I don't want to own any other car after that. I was like, oh, my God, this car is amazing. Like, this, I, you have to learn how to drive. Like, if you don't like Tesla, my thing is, my first question is, did you ever drive a Tesla Model 3? Do you ever drive any Tesla car? And if the answer is no, then, then that person is extremely biased, and you shouldn't take any credibility. If the person said, yes, I test drive it, which is not the same as owning it. If you own the Tesla, you know, you, you'll you know that that's the future because you're going to feel it. You're going you're gonna to feel right away because you have to learn how to drive again. I'm 40 years old and I still have to learn how to drive again. That's crazy because it's, it's a new way of driving. It's a new experience. And I'm still, I, I, you know, I own it many years now, you know, almost four years now, and it's still, I, 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 it's still like I'm discovering something all the time. It's just unbelievable. And and what happened is all those people here, they, they, they all wish they bought the stock at $20. They're like, man, I wish I have a $20. And then the thing went to like $190 under 200 
And then they, and then of course it went to four hundred. They're all like, "Man, I wish I had a two hundred. I remember the conversation at one thirteen, you know, around one hundred dollars, and people were people were talking about, "Well, I wish I owned Tesla at one hundred. And then for for a whole year into twenty twenty three, I hear people talking about, "Man, I wish Tesla's come down. I wish Tesla come down." Well, here's an opportunity to buy Tesla. Most of you, not you, some people look at it as this is doom and gloom, like, wow, crazy. Some people look at it as an opportunity to buy. I look at it as an opportunity to buy because I don't want to buy Tesla at 240 or 250 or $300. I want to buy Tesla at 160 or 150 or 130 This is great. One thing, Tesla is not AT&T. Tesla is not Verizon. Tesla is not, I can't think of any company, it's not... Uh, um, you know, it's not Target, it's not uh, Walgreens, it's not AMC Movie Theater, things that are about to go bankrupt here. I'm just trying to name things that are about to go bankrupt. It's not the same company. It's just crazy. Somebody, like, are these people, as, are, are they analysis? Are they really, truly analysis? Like, how is it this? GameStop. Huh? I'm sorry, go ahead. GameStop, that's oh. the place. Yeah, yeah, but they already. Yeah, oh, is GameStop bankrupt already? I haven't been in GameStop in a while. No, they are still operating. They are still operating. Oh my God, God bless them. Oh my God. Uh, when I was younger, GameStop was a cool, cool thing to go do. Um, that's where you get all the animation. And uh, but yeah, it's it's just crazy, you know. Like like did are these people actually analyze anything? Man, I'll tell you, one thing about one thing I learned about uh, contracting, like military, I don't know about other contracting, government. The, the government, the U.S. government has a lot of analysts. They, 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 we hired people to analyze all kinds of stuff. It's just crazy. And I'm sitting there sometimes, and you're just sitting there, and you're like, I don't need a machine to tell me that, mister. This is crazy. This is stupid. There's a very famous line in War Game. If you ever see the movie War Game with Matthew Broderick, let me see if I can find it real quick. I'm not going to play it. And the general, uh, War G yeah, this movie right here, War Game. There's, there's a, a very famous line in War Game where the warper machine is, uh, you know, is telling them to launch a nuclear attack. And so he's asking the, the civilian contractor, you know, he's like, He's like, hey, what's, what does your machine tell me to do? He said, you need to launch all your missile. And the general general there, he's like, I don't need a machine to tell me that. <laughs> and and, and sometimes, uh, you know, I'm new to investment. I'm brand new to investment. And I'm sitting there listening to an uh, analyst just predicting this thing going to go completely kapoop. Like Tesla is going to fail tomorrow. That is crazy. Like, how could you come to that conclusion? And it's, it's just it mind-boggling me. That's when, that's when I realized that sometimes these analysts, they just, they just essentially creating fear-mongering or whatever. I don't, know, I don't know what the purpose is. Now, let me ask this. Maybe they do that to devalue the stock so they can buy it? Is that, is that I'm, I, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just asking the question. Uh, Claude, I do you know? I believe it is. Yeah. I believe it is. I believe there, there's and nobody will ever admit to it, but I think that is one way of market manipulation, the upgrades and the downgrades. Really, I'm, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, and you... that's that's just my thought. That's just my thought. Well, you and I don't know each other, and we have the same thought. Why is that? <laughs> Well, you know, you got you got you got big players in the game. Yeah. That uh, you know, they they want to they want to position themselves, position their firms, position their clients. Yeah. You know. And uh, you know, it it's it like I said, it's it's just a thought. I'm not saying that it's true, but you know, sometimes when companies yeah get upgraded or downgraded, you really have to say to yourself, where did that come from? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, you and I come to the same conclusion. Let me show you a history real quick. Um, there, there was this guy, I was watching this video on my way to work. Let me see if I can find him. Um, 
I've been. I, I, I'm. I'm gonna. Have you. Have you seen the new Shogun yet, Claude? Claude, you gotta watch the Shogun. It's on. No, I, I just. I just started watching this. Uh, this. This Avatar. Uh, Airbender. I got the Shogun on my on my list as well as House of Ninjas. So I, I'll get oh, around to it. So I saw House of Ninja. Now House Shogun of Ninja. Is amazing. House of Ninja. You may. I, I like it a lot. I, I like House of Ninja a lot, but but not enough action. Okay. Right? Okay. It, it's not. It's not. It's well, not like House of. It's not like uh, Game of Thrones where there's action. It's it's more PG. House of Ninja is essentially. Uh, it's like watching. It's like it, like you can put your kids and watch House of Ninja. Oh, so it's not like that that ninja uh, assassins where you no, see them moving no. in the shadows. Well, no, because it's still Asian market because they don't they don't they don't their rating systems there they still show violence. Okay, it's, you know, but okay. but the movie theme the story is essentially is it's essentially target for teenagers. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah so that, that's my take on it, but it's really good. It's really good. It's still violent. I mean, you still see. Hand, leg, yeah. arm, chop off, and stuff like that. But it's just, but it's the whole premise, the whole story is built around a family. So you know, it's just think about that. All right, all okay. right. So I watched this video. Uh, meet Kevin. Got oh no, not meet Kevin. Got Sue. Uh, where where is it? Oh right here. Meet Kevin shorting Tesla. So I don't know anything about Kevin. I never seen his show. I I don't know who he is, and I don't know anything about Echo from about either. So I just happen to see it. I click on it. Because what the title caught me is it meet Kevin is shorting Tesla, and so this guy, uh, this gentleman here, he his he made an argument that that Kevin a few months ago make a video about Tesla like he's all in on Tesla, you know you can retire off Tesla, and all of a sudden he's shorting Tesla, and somebody had to explain what. Well, first of all, Claude, have you seen this? I was going to ask you to. I, not not that. I, you, do you know this YouTube video by any chance? YouTube channel. No, I, I sure don't. I All sure right. don't. Yeah. So what does it mean by shorting Tesla? So he's making a big deal. He's like, hey, this guy is talking, talking, you know, like you can retire off Tesla, and then a couple months later he's talking about shorting Tesla. Does that mean you're like quitting on Tesla? You're leaving? You're abandoning ship? Or what? What does that mean? No. Basically, what he's doing is, is. Think about it in the terms of a short sale of real estate. Okay. So you're agreeing to borrow, in this case, shares uh, from your broker, and you will wait for that asset to depreciate in value. When it appreciate, when it depreciates, when it depreciates in value. Then you're looking to cover at a lower price, and you keep the difference, and because you're giving those shares back, you don't own those shares. Those, like I said earlier, yeah. those shares are borrowed from your broker. Yeah. So when you cover them, you buying them back at a cheaper price, and you're giving them shares back to your broker, but you keep the difference. So, for example, yeah. If you borrow shares, All right, at ten dollars. Let me write okay. This yep, ten dollar. All right. And you're shorting it, and the value depreciates down to eight dollars. Okay. You cover those shares, which means you're doing a buy to close, right? Mm -hmm. At eight dollars, and you turn around and you give those shares back to your broker, and you keep the two dollar difference. Ah. Uh. That's that's shorting. Now, Charles Schwab has a feature which I was playing around with. Uh, should I log off? There's there's a shorten feature. There's a feature you can shorten it. They essentially borrow the money. There's a whole there's a whole video in Charles Schwab that teach us how to do that. You can actually watch it. So essentially, uh, you essentially borrow the way they explain Charles Schwab. You essentially borrow. You click on this few. Uh, I don't know. I haven't done it. So, but you click on the button and you essentially borrow the money. It, the borrow money or borrow share? Oh, you know, I thought they borrow your share. That's what shares. I thought. You're borrowing shares. Whose share is that? Your share or Tesla's share? 
No, they're the broker. The brokers has some house stuff. Okay. Basically, look at, look at it as the brokerage stuff. Okay, so broker shares. And and then, okay, I think I, I, I kind of understand. We just have to do it in, in order for me to understand. I don't understand enough to explain it. I, I think I understand what Claude was just saying, but what he's saying, what I'm thinking may be totally different. But um, And that's that's just being me being new. But the point of this video was this guy is shorting it, and and this is where I asked the question that maybe it was a planned event because here's his theory. This guy loved Tesla six months ago, and he's telling everybody to go buy Tesla, and he has you know I guess apparently he has a side business where he teach oh, people how to be investor, advisor, and oh. stuff like that. So he essentially said, hey, you come and sign up my package and pay me a service and I'll teach you how to be an investor and make money and, and stuff like that. Not like, not like me, I'm the opposite, you know, like, hey, everything should be free. And <laughs> like, like, we're just talking about it. We're not advising anybody. But so anyway, this guy does, you know, this gentleman has a beef with this, uh, this guy named Meet Kevin. And so he, his theory is that if he truly believed that Tesla was short, uh, was gonna go down, he would have buy it at 180 or 200 uh, short and then as it come down, but because he do it now at 160, at, in a in a high 160, he believed that this is a gimmicks, essentially for to, to essentially he's making money not from not from his portfolio, he's making money from YouTube because it essentially become clickbait for him. So that's number one, and and so the the other theory is that that everybody who shortened Tesla. They really, they they really in it for other reason, you know. Other, I guess, uh, I want to say evil master plan. I guess, you know, like I don't know what the word for it, Claude. I just kind of blank up. What? No, I don't know about all that, but it's 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 just another way to make money on the downside. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's it's just crazy. Uh, I I don't know much about the market, but I just know that. Hey, if Tesla's down, uh, let me close this because it's, I, it zoned me out. Um, if Tesla's down, I'm gonna buy more. Now, now for those, I, I wish I had my account open, I wanna show you. I only buy five share, uh, three share, two shares. I don't buy a lot, so I just buy what my mean is. I'm not putting, uh, I'm not putting, uh, you know, $5,000 at 170. I'm putting five shares at 170. I'm putting three shares at 160 or something like that. So I'm just, I'm, that's, that's all I can afford. It's not like I'm super rich. So, but I'm buying very small chunk as it's going down and I'm DCAing down. My average right now is like low 190. I start at 240. So when I start way up here and now it's 190. Next month, guess what? Next month gonna come back. I, I'm gonna get my dividends. Then I'm gonna be able to buy some more. And of course my average is gonna come down with it too. I'm just gonna keep buying it. I'm gonna keep buying as long as low, and because when it go back up, it's gonna be unbelievable. It's gonna be unbelievable because now I have forty something share. I have forty something share of Tesla now, at one ninety price. So when it break two hundred, man, just think about it. it's if it go three hundred. That's like, uh, that's a lot of money, on the table right there. That uh, that definitely can pay off my margin pretty quickly. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You want to say something? Did somebody just? Did somebody want to say something? I think that was William. All right. He uh, got an open mic. Yeah, William, you have open mic. We we weren't sure if you're talking or not. So uh, Silver Liner say he shortened Tesla because Goldman Sachs has given Tesla price target of one twenty five dollar. What the heck? You believe that, Claude? Oh no, I believe that Goldman Sachs. I, it, it 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 to me. I'm just being honest. It don't it, it don't matter to me if the chart tells me we falling. Yeah. I'm going to adjust accordingly. I ain't trying to be funny, yeah. but. You know, I'm a technical guy. Yeah. And also other financial institution downgrades Tesla, and they have an influence on the stock. So earlier we talked about 
the notion that, you know, if they come in out and downgrade a stock, because they have influence in the market, that causing the sell-off. So, Wells Fargo analysts also did the same uh, this week. You downgraded the stock and uh, a lot. Yeah. So, that caused that uh, also a pressure to the stock, uh, to the Tesla stock. Uh, yeah, I heard those. Did you hear that? Tell you something. Yeah. Yeah, I read Dan I, who, who is well known in the community and respected, put a price target of 315 on Tesla. So, who do you believe? You need to go and do your own work. Figure out what you think Tesla is worth, and that'll give you a price per share. You can do a discounted um, cash flow analysis and come up with your own figures. Now, I get that that's probably more than most people want to do. But if you want to play in this market, you need to understand what's happening in this market. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, I think one of the things they're missing is that they don't see the whole picture of the company because of all the innovation coming uh, and will be coming in the future. They, they, they kind of pricing the company like a traditional vehicle company, auto company, automobile company. They're not looking at all the other things that the Tesla will offer or currently offering. And, and this is a mispricing from their side. So I'm bullish yeah. on Tesla. I do believe that it will come back up over time. And, uh, and, and that's the problem with this financial institution when these, they're doing this analysis, in my humble opinion, of course. Uh, that's not financial advice. I think that what they're looking at is that they're comparing the company with other traditional uh, auto companies. So they're looking at the valuation. They say, oh, this is a very high value growth stock which is selling based on that amount PE, I don't know, I think it's 55 uh, PE or whatever they, they're telling. And, but they're missing all the things that they're currently working on. And yeah. because we're looking at the discount cash flow and we're paying premium for the price of the stock because we're looking at bright future for the company, they don't account that for right yeah I, i'm exactly. sure you agree with this right yeah i do i 100 percent agree with what you've said lion it's it's really simple if you believe it's just a car company then it's grossly overvalued okay it should be a what are most com car companies 12 to 15 times tops yes and it's grossly o overvalued if you believe it's an energy slash software slash technology in ai so slash AI slash mining company, then it's grossly, and I mean grossly undervalued. And that's the free options you get when you buy a Tesla share. None of that is factored into their pricing models. And that's the thing that ARK Invest do differently. Even if it's only a 5% chance that something might come off, it is in their valuation model. And that's the difference. And while Dan Ives goes out and says he understands what um, ARK Invest is saying, he doesn't believe that 100% either. And hence, his price target for the next 12 months is $315. And th the problem with ARK Invest, if you can call it a problem, is that ARK Invest look out at least five years and normally 10 and most people don't have that as a frame of reference. So, I don't know. Um, at the end of the day, you've, you guys have got to do what's right for you. You shouldn't rely on other people to tell you what's happening in the market. You should do your own research. Look, since um, December 31 and since we got the annual report from Tesla um, in mid-January. Has anything changed in the company? Nothing. Yeah, they're building another. They're, 
They're building another mega factory and probably two. They'll announce another one soon. Wait until Mexico Every come online. Yeah, the the right there's, a, there's a factory in Mexico. There's a battery factory. And there's a factory in Germany that burned down. But that's going to, you know, there's a whole bunch of factories going to come online. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, but there's a whole heap of other stuff happening too, mate. Yeah. Like they, they're just about, they're ramping Cybertruck to start with. Okay. Then they've got the next generation model coming. Um, and when will that be? Up feeling tells me late this year, early next year. You know, and they've already said, and they said just this week, that they're going to build that in Europe. So, you know, um, you, you can't listen to people that have an invested interest um, in doing, like meet Kevin. He was bullish on Tesla and now he's not. Why? There's nothing's changed in the company. They're still yeah. going and ticking all the boxes. The price is going down because of the hive mind of the market. People are impatient. They want results and they want them today. Show me any other car manufacturer that has started in the last 30 years, and let's just use car manufacturing, that has turned a profit and is still alive today. And you can't because there isn't one. So, I don't know. A lot of people say don't bet against Elon, and I tend to agree with that. Am I bullish on Tesla? Yes. I'm bullish on SpaceX too, because as, as I said before, he makes the impossible merely late. But you guys have to do what suits you. Do your plan. At least have a plan. At least have a thesis so you know what your action's going to be in any event. You know, if it drops 10% of you out, this is what nearly everybody misses. You have to do the hard yards yourself. You really do. If you don't, you lose money. It's not the fund's fault. It's your fault. I'm sorry, but they're just the cold hard facts. Am I being a bastard here? I'm trying not to. I'm trying to be nice about it. I want you guys to succeed. But you've got to help yourself. You know, when I fall in love with Tesla, when I went, so this is how I bought the Tesla car. Um, I was stationed, I, I was stationed in DC area during the time. And uh, so me and my girl, we, we, we went out to the mall. This is Norton, Virginia, uh, rich area. This is like Obama country. So if you, if you all were know where President Obama lived. So it's all rich area. This is where you buy Louis Vuitton bags and, you know, and anything like that. So I'm out there walking around, and on the second floor, there's a Tesla store. There's like a little, little tiny shop. And I walk in there, and I was like, wow, I, you know, I never thought. Now, I'm, I want to own a Ford F-150. The, uh, the reason is because I need to move my boats around. That's, that's the reason why I do it. Uh, and, but but uh, when I sat down in the Tesla car, and the guy showed me all these buttons, how it fart and make noise and all that stuff. I'm like, well, this is gimmicky. This is silly. But I haven't drive yet. I'm just sitting there. It's just, to me, it was like, oh, it's a Honda, you know, it's a, a sedan, uh, you know. And, and so it's nothing, nothing special about the car. But they made me an appointment to test drive the car. I said, okay, I'll come back, you know. So two weeks later, me and my girl, we went to the, the, their, their center. Now, when I walked to the center, this warehouse is huge. But it's abandoned. It looked like they just bought this abandoned warehouse. They put a Tesla sign on it, and that was it. That's how new it was. And uh, and I walk in, test drive, and the guy, it was so easy. The transition of renting a car, or borrowing a car was so easy. He said, let me see your driver's license. He scanned it, and he, like, next thing you know, uh, next thing you know, he said, here's the key. And it was, give me a card. He showed, the problem was he didn't show me how to drive the car. So it was like he knew that that experience I had to learn myself. So he just showed me the basic stuff and just reverse, you know, go back and forth. But man, when I step on the gas for the first time, I fell in love with this car. And I knew that this is the future. Like this is the future. Like it's unbelievable. And I didn't, of course, I didn't know how to use the, you know, the drive or anything. But I fell in love. I said, so I walked back in and said, I'm buying it. So I told, I told the guy, I said, hey, I want to buy it. 
So I want to buy it. That's it. Now, obviously, if you if you don't have money, you're not going to be able to do this. You, you, you got to take loans and all that stuff. I was able to just, you know, just buy it straight out, you know, with Tesla and, uh, um, uh, with, you know, just with my money. So I said, hey, I'm, I'm going to buy it. And, and the guy said, yep, you're going to be on this waiting list about three months. Fast forward a couple months later, I got a phone call and said, hey, your car's ready. And they, they actually tell you the car is being built as you go along. They say what color you want and all that stuff, and, it's, and, it's, and they're telling you being built. And now the car is shipped to you, all right? I show up at the dealership, and this, is, this, this building is probably maybe three months old. The, the, Tesla, dealership, the Tesla place is probably maybe, it, it's like, it was like abandoned warehouse, literally abandoned warehouse. And a whole bunch of Tesla car park all over the place. You know, they just randomly park. So I, I walk in there, and the guy said, "Hey, yeah, just fill out this paperwork, and um, and then here is the uh, let me see your driver license, and then and and here's you know essentially go ahead and use your app." So I use my app, and I click on a few button. I move the money. I essentially purchase it, and I jump in the car and I drove off. It was that easy. It was that easy, and I, I was like, I knew I, this Tesla figured out how to be a shopper. They, they figured out how to set up, you know, they, they, they just understand the consumer. They understand it. And uh, I got out of the, that place, and first time I drove uh, on the highway with the Tesla Model 3, and I turned on the automatic driving. Holy cow. Once you turn the automatic driving, and you just go ding, ding, that you just tap on the right side on the steering wheel, you you will never, I'm telling you, after that, you will never want to drive any other car after that. I fell in love. I fell in love, and I just, it's the best thing ever. And that's why when somebody, when somebody said that, when somebody said that Tesla is a horrible car company or it's bad or whatever, it's going to fail, they haven't been in that car. They haven't drive that car. Once you drive that car, your your mind's gonna change. Uh, I truly believe that, man. I, that's how I evaluate in this stock. That's why I'm all in. Uh, that's why I'm just such a, a strong believer of Tesla. Uh, that's why I'm putting so much money in. Now, m the tough point for me is the tough part for me is I'm an income investor first, all right? So I'm trying to generate cash flow. Without cash flow, I can't buy any. I can't buy Tesla stock. In order for me to buy Tesla stock, I have to use my money. I don't want to use my salary money. I want to use my dividends. So, but. I'm getting six thousand dollars a month. If I don't, if I don't buy more income fund, I'm always going to get six thousand dollars a month. So I got to get to ten thousand dollars a month, and it's frustrate me. I don't have ten thousand dollars a month now. If I have ten thousand dollars a month now, oh my god, I'd be buying Tesla like it's Kool Aid at one sixty six, one sixty two price. I'm just going to buy a hundred share, right? I'm going to, I'm just going to say, hey, give me, uh, give me fifty shares for this month. That's crazy, you know. I, I. I just, that's why, that's why I'm just, that's why I got to focus on the income first. I got to, I'm frustrated because I'm not there yet in my goal. I got to focus on income first. So I have the money to buy more Tesla. Now I, I am still buying Tesla, but I buy like five share, three share, two shares. I'm not taking a lot of my income to buy it. Uh, that's the beauty of the income fund. That's the beauty of what I'm doing is that I have the money to buy what I want to buy. In this case, is Tesla. If I were to buy Tesla and I don't have an income fund, that money is coming from my salary. So that's something to think about. You know, so every time that there's a people debate with me, they're oh, I don't know why they want to. First of all, I don't know why you all want to debate with me. I, I, I'm a nobody. Go debate with retired dividend. He's in chat right now. Go debate with him. Go debate with uh, Max. Go debate with KC. Go debate with uh, THB. Go debate with anybody. Those guys are good. They know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why, you know. So, um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a, an investor. You know, I just, I'm just trying to make money just like everybody else. You know? And I have an idea, I have a plan. I'm sticking with it. You know. So every every time when those debate come, they always like, hey, you know, you buying Tesla, you should have just buy the underline, or your your Tesla is throwing money away. You're losing, you're failing, and all that stuff. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm generating cash flow. If I don't generate cash flow, let me ask you this question. How do you pay for the Tesla stock? 
How do you pay for the Tesla stock right now? Are you going to buy Tesla stock at 162? How do you pay for that? And they, they never really bother to answer that question. Well, guess what? There's only one or two answers. Either your dad gives you some money or your family, somebody gives you some money. Or it's coming from your salary. Or you have to sell something. You have to sell some other things to buy that Tesla stock. High yield dividend investor, people like me who, who focus on income, I haven't put money, I haven't take, put any of my money contribution to my portfolio since January. That means every money that I generate is from my dividends, and I use that dividend to buy Tesla stock. I use dividend, dividends to buy Tesla, uh, Tesla stock, or buy yield max stocks, or buy Defiance stocks, or buy Fepi, or buy whatever I want to buy. Or... I took some money out so I can go spend it on my girl. It's, it's my choice. It's $6,000, but I can use it any way I want. And as long as I don't sell, as long as I don't sell my, uh, my Tesla, I'm not losing anything. It's generating me $6,000 every month. And then people say, well, it, you know, that's not true because it's not going to guarantee you generate, you know, it's going to generate lower or whatever. I own this thing over a year. It has not generated anything lower than 41 cents. So it is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It has, it has not generated anything lower. It has not generated anything lower than 50% yield. I'm just talking about Tussie stock. Yield Mac has so, so many other stocks. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's doing exactly as advertised. It's doing exactly what Jay is talking about. It's doing exactly what Sylvia is talking about. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It doesn't... So... It is generating me income at, at the yield that I that I that I want and and um, yeah, so it's crazy. People like uh, like and uh, of course a lot of people out there, you know, still you know, it, hey, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you do whatever you want to do, man. It's your investment. This is my investment strategy, and I, I own forty shares of Tesla already. You know. The crazy part is people are so busy attacking us, but no one asked the question. Like, we have some rich immigrants here. We have some rich, rich immigrants. We have, we have people that own $2 million worth of Tesla stock and do option trade on stock. And he's an immigrant. He's just an immigrant like me. Came to the United States and, and just worked his way. He's working a gym. Just think about it. He's working a gym. I don't know. Is Sam in there? Uh, anybody see Sam? All right. And, um, yeah. We speak the same language and everything, man. It's just that. And he owned $2 million worth of Tesla stocks. Why, why, why is this immigrant able to do that? Because he was he able to buy it. So instead of, instead of trying to figure it out and ask me questions, and just instead of figuring out what we're doing is wrong... No one take the time to ask us how we do it. Go look around the neighborhood. Go look around your neighborhood and look at all the immigrants that just move into your neighborhood and ask yourself the question, how do those people do it? How do they figure it out? Yeah. We, we figured it out. We kind of figured it out. But no one ever take the time and ask. And that's why I love, my commu I love, I love the community, man, that... There's people coming out community. We're talking about one thing we don't do is 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 insult each other. We don't insult. You know, we're grown men. We're just grown men and grown women. We just have conversation and figure out. We we want to know how do you do it? How do you do it? What fund do you pick? You've picked this fund, or oh, I picked this fund. Why you went to more fund than this? I I constantly learn something new all the time because people they, there's so many choices and people do different things. Some people some people are forty percent. Um, uh, crypto and some people are bonds, some people are Forzex, some people are all in on, on yield max, some people are all in on defiance, some people are FEPI, some people are whatever. There's so many different choices and, and they all have this different variable and they all have different rewards. But they're doing really well. They're all doing really well. They're all making money. They're all getting rich, richer. And when they came to this country, they had nothing. And I tell the story all the time, man. How is it a guy 
who work as a janitor at a parking lot can figure out about yield max and Tesla and and all these other funds. He doesn't own just Tesla, he owns all the other funds too. How is it that he figured out how to make money and all the education, all the training and all the tools and all the smartness, all the YouTube video that you make, you can't figure it out, but this guy can figure it out. Because what happened is you're too busy, a lot of, some of you are too busy insulting us instead, instead of trying to ask how do he do it. But I take the time to ask him, dude, how do you do it when you're working as a janitor? What do you do? How do you save your money? What do you put your money on? How do you invest it? What do you buy one at a time? You buy a different chunk? Or what, what, what is your thought process? That's what I want to learn. I want to see how he do it, so I want to learn from it. But people are so busy sometimes. It's crazy, man. That's why, I, that's why, um, that's why it's, 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 so, it's so fun sometimes just to, to be in this space, in this YouTube space, and people just throwing darts at you. Shoo, 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 shoo. And l like uh, me and Claude, we were talking about this some, uh, assassin ninja just throwing these uh, you know, ninja star at you. And they're coming from all different directions. You get your hand chopped off, your leg chopped off, and shoo, 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 shoo. And, um, but no one bothered to ask, like, what the heck is this ninja doing? And uh, nobody bothered to ask. And so, yeah, and, and that's the beauty. I, I, I really enjoy it. It's one of the, this is, this YouTube space and this investment space has been the most fun. And, uh, and there's people out there, man. <laughs> that's billion, my friend, not million. Oh, man, what's going on with chat? I, I, I flip over, I look over, and there's like a whole bunch of chatting. <laughs> All right. Uh, you, you all agreed. Uh, who who here disagree what I said, or or just maybe have a different take on it? Yeah, I would love to have your opinion on this. So I, I was looking at portfolio review. I know you guys want to talk about portfolio review because that's like the most popular thing. And uh, and did anybody send me any portfolio? Uh, Blockhead, are you here? All right, so Blockhead is not here. He sent me a portfolio. Hey, yo, Mir. Yeah, yes, sir. This this Chef. Yeah, Chef. I just wanted to come in on what you said about immigrant. It's a whole lot of us that were born and bred and ain't have nothing. And started from, from nothing. You know, my, my, my travels, you know, I joined the military. Yeah, like, like me, yeah. Did my 20 years, retired from that, and that set me up for life. And I just started building from there. You know, all during my military career, I was, you know, I was saving a little bit. But, you know, you wasn't saving too much. And I just kept going, man, slowly. You know what I'm saying? I didn't listen to all the people say, hey, do this, do that. I, I, I started my plan, and I stuck with it. Consistency is, is the main thing that most of most people have a problem with. They'll start something but won't see it to the end. And you know, now I'm I'm, I'm like I'm like uh, 1.5, you know, and it's steady growing. And it all started with you know something simple. We I started with USAA, yep, and I same. just kept going. Yeah, yeah. But you see, the the, the a lot of problem is that. Uh, some of the younger people, they don't have the time, they don't take the time to ask you how you did it. What was the secret of your success and, and the journey what make you become rich? They're so busy hating you. They hate your fund. They hate your portfolio. Without, without I, think, I think what you have to do for, for a young person, yeah. you have to, you don't have to do this, but I think I've seen it happen so uh, pretty regular. Yeah. A young person is more about having fun partying and all that i did that after you know maybe about 10 years into the military i started thinking I, i'm looking at my bank account i'm like dang i got a whole lot of memories but my, my bank account kind of shaded you know and that's when that's when the light came on and I, I just turned it on from there you know things that i didn't need you know i just cut back and and, and i just start putting everything in the investments you know and my wife 
you, you got to have two people with that mindset. You can't have one person trying to save and the other one spinning it before it even come in, you know. But me and my old lady, we got on the same accord. And, hey, we, we straight now, you know, and like you say. But, you know, I don't have to take my regular money and put into it because my dividends is, is way up there, you know. Yeah. But I choose to. If I have a whole bunch of excess money, I add my my paycheck money in with my um my 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 dividends to make that snowball roll faster yeah but uh i found out today man and i I, i'm not gonna slow down but i had my my accountant was working on my taxes man i'm I'm gonna be like eighty five thousand dollars i got to pay in taxes and and uh but i ain't gonna let that scare me you know what i'm saying i'm gonna keep rolling yeah yeah, yeah, it's easy. It's 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 awesome, man. You know, it's you know, a, a couple of years ago, uh, I told my boss I I put in my uh, that's the army called whiskey ninety five two or is it retirement plan retirement your paperwork what are they called? Oh, we just we we used to call it just your retirement. Oh, right. papers. So so anyway, I put in my paper. I said I'm done. Uh, I'm punching out. Uh, and so we went through the whole ceremony and, and the whole process, you know, like we're, we're going we're gonna to do this. But you know what happened? Life happened. I got a girl and I, I you know, like, you know, like, like things I didn't think about, you know, think uh, like, so, uh, yeah. So guess what? I, I'm still working. <laughs> like my plan was to retire a couple of years ago, you know, and, and go drink my Thai and, and, you know, on a beach somewhere in, in Bali. And, and travel, but you well, know, what what happened is you life change and and uh, you found you found people and you want now you want to now you want to start a family and take care of each other and you want to spend the rest of your life with this young lady, you know, and uh, and yeah. So guess what? Um, what I'm good at, I'm just I'm good at you know good at my my job and just I continue on and just continue on do the best I can. But uh, eventually, I gotta I gotta come I gotta come to Jesus moment and say, hey. So I, the one good thing is once I decide to go back to work, it's give me stability because if I didn't go back to work, I would have to spend my retirement money on this, on, on, on my portfolio, which is not the same, you know, getting paid full time and, and getting retirement money to spend on portfolio is not the same. So, so I, that, that's why I'm, I'm, that's why I had a three year plan to reach as high as I can. Now, I would love to say 20,000, but I don't know if I can make it 20,000, but I want to reach as high as I can to get 15,000, 20,000. If I'm making $20,000 a month, okay, $20,000 a month plus all my other benefits, okay, why would I care what Tesla stock is? You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. Why? If you're making $20,000 a month of dividend income, I don't give a damn about Tesla stocks or Coca-Cola stocks or Nvidia stocks or Microsoft stocks or any stocks. I just, as a matter of fact, what I'll do is I diversify my portfolio so that I ensure that $20,000 will always happen all the time. That's probably well, the only I spread yeah. I spread it mine out and yeah. and 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 I'm getting I'm getting right at about 32 grand a month. Yeah, and like you say, I don't give a damn which way the water flow up the river, down the river. Yeah, I will own. <laughs> I will own every right right now. I own a lot already. I will own TLTW. Just yo, know, this this I should. This is a bond fund. I will own that because it generate me income. You know, I will own a portion of that to so give me just get the solidify the twenty thousand dollars. I will own U.S. Gov. Uh, U.S. Gov ETF. Uh, I forgot. Is it um, USG GOV? Uh, where is the U- GOF? Is it GOF? US what? GOF is a bond fund. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paying dividend. Yeah. The, I forgot which one it is that paid uh, dividend. Guggenheim. Guggenheim. Yeah. yeah. I will own this. It's yeah. crazy. I own that. Yeah. You own that? Yeah. So I, I thank you. I couldn't think of the name. You know, I, it, there's nothing wrong with that. It's 18 cents, but it's still, you know what? 
But if you, I do it, I get $20,000 a month. That's why it's so important to get that. And then, then you diversify your income to solidify even more. So what if Tesla has a bad day? So what if Corny has a bad day? So what Yield Max has a bad day? It doesn't matter because my fund is going to be diversified across the board. Uh, so I may not get $20,000 that month. Okay, I get $18,000 a month. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, that's why this is one of the best thing about it, man. This is, this is, people are so busy worrying about us, they forgot to ask the question. And um, I went on a debate one time. Uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, so I was in a, uh, I was at a, a lecture at a, at a university and I was giving, you know, talking about military stuff, you know, and, and this professor wanted to debate me. He like, he wanted to debate me. I was like, I'm like, sir, you, I don't know why you want to debate me. Uh, but no, first of all, you already lost this debate just by the one to debate me. I want you to think about, I would just want to think about what you're doing. What, like, I have no background in what you're talking about. I have no training, no skill, no nothing. And you want to debate a guy who's like literally an immigrant who came to the United States and, and lived through Boston. I went to Boston Public School and now I survived through it. And I went through the military. I survived through that. And you want to debate me about <laughs> geopolitics? Oh, like, God bless you, man. I, 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 like, even you win, do you feel like you're winning? <laughs> well, he lost. He, he, the debate didn't even happen because he just lost on that premise alone that you're essentially debating on the, with an immigrant who had no background on this stuff. And, and even you win, you feel like you're going to win? Like, I, I don't, there's no win or lose to me because I'm just happy to be here. Like, I'm debating this guy who is a college professor with all the degree, all the, all the degree on the wall, and I'm having a conversation with him. I'm like, that's crazy, crazy. It's just crazy. See, that's Amir, that, that, that's what's unique about this channel, you know? And I, I, have, I have a bachelor's degree, whatnot, you know? Yeah. But you can have all the sheep skins you want on the wall, but, it, but not, don't have common sense. <laughs> and I call I call this channel your channel is a common sense approach where people can understand it and people making money. You know what I'm saying? I don't know I don't know if no job could pay me what I'm making off of dividends and I ain't doing nothing. And it all started from me watching your channel. <laughs> I was me and my wife was in Germany on vacation. Yeah. And I'm on YouTube. Cause I, you know, I, I understand. You watch my YouTube in Germany? <laughs> yes, sir. I was, I was watching YouTube in Germany and I came across your channel and that's when Tesla, it was Tesla and O, o A R K was like I say, the only two that you could uh, really yeah. invest in. Yeah. And I, I jumped in yeah. and I jumped in with all four feet, both feet <laughs> and, and, uh, I'm happy that I did it. Tesla is down right now, but I'm still getting paid, you know? Yeah. And imagine once all the dust settled and that thing go back up, man. Shoot. Yeah. I, I, ain't, I ain't complaining about nothing, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm content. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's, it's. I tell you what, what upset me though, a couple yeah. of days ago, when was that last week when that guy? Oh, yeah, that I guy. I forgot what his name is. He came on, Connie, man. Connie. I got so pissed. C O N Y. <laughs> I got so pissed, man. I, I, I just, I couldn't take it no more. Did, did you left in anger? Yeah, I left in anger, man. You know, I, I try. I didn't want to say anything because, you know, I, you know, I want to be respectful and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But, I always say the proof is in the pudding. That young man can say what he want to say, but people are making money doing their own, yeah. making their own decisions and not having no financial planner going in there, taking their money and all this kind of stuff. They're doing it the simple way. Yeah. And he so, can say what he want to say. 
Yeah, he's telling us not only we fail. <laughs> My favorite is when he started insulting Matt. <laughs> he started insulting Matt. Uh, in, in, yeah, uh, he just sounded arrogant. Yeah. Oh, who's that? Who's that soccer? The Watchman. Oh, yeah. Oh, you saw it too? You were there? Yeah. Yeah, I was listening. Oh, man. That must have been rough. Uh, <laughs> what's your take on that? I'm just glad he got kicked at the end. <laughs> that that was a, that part made me laugh. You guys timed it perfectly. perfectly. The band part, you know, I got my hand here, so I'm not banning anybody. The time it was just like it was, uh, it was. I think I think he pissed off Brandon. <laughs> you were schooling him. Um, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, it was an interesting conversation, and it was really only one of them that was trying to play havoc and he just wasn't because he just didn't understand and he still doesn't understand because I think he was in um, in chat on YouTube earlier mm -hmm. just as a by the by um, and somebody stopped him I didn't but it doesn't matter you know what matters out of all of this even all the discussion today it comes back to of a plan to your plan mm -hmm. if you need to change your plan that's okay you know do what you've got to do let the math talk to you if you're math inclined don't let feelings get in the way yeah, yeah. i love this stuff you know i really do it, it's a lot of fun even on red days it's a lot of fun because that's buying time for people with the right mindset yep you know and and look your thesis mightn't play out, so it means you need to get out of a stock. Do it. Mm -hmm. The opportunity cost is much too high. There's so many you know? choice now that you don't have to own Tesla. I keep telling people that all the time. You could own any, any div matter of fact, any dividend stock. It's up to you. And there's so many choices now that's unbelievable. I mean, we're talking about at least over 50, 50 something. Oh, I, more. I, Maybe more. I, I just can't even count it now. It's just so. What do y'all think? Huh? Oh, excuse right. me. What do y'all think about this? These uh, ETFs that pay out weekly. Oh, I I can't wait to see it. We we have to see at least a, a month worth of of products. But in theory, it's unbelievable. But we, well, we don't know what the dividend is. If it's if it's paying us twenty five cents a month. So uh, twenty five cents a week come out to be a a, a, a dollar a month. I I I'm in it. I'm in. Uh, maybe maybe something uh, a consideration, but if it's paying you know like ten cents you know and and giving me forty cents, I might as well just buy Tesla then, or I buy you know Defiance or Coney or something else you know. Um, but the <laughs> idea I like about the weekly is it cover the gaps that I have in my weekly pay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but you have to understand it's all cost, cost money too. It's not cheap. Let me let me see. Q D T E. Yeah. You keep looking up and I'll just put my two cents in here. Yeah, go ahead. The problem I have with weeklies is that if it pays a decent dividend and they don't pick the the stocks right that they put in it. Um so if they pick something that's on a down trajectory. Mm-hmm. Um, your nav depletion is going to be faster because they don't have time to recover what's already been taken out, even though they've put it in there first. And ideally, with the um, with the profits they make on trading, the profits should equal what they pay. Okay, so I don't think you'll see them doing a return of capital just for the sake of giving you a return, or at least I would hope not, because in that case, you're getting a double hit of depletion. They're taking money from the fund, so assets under management, yeah, and and giving it to you in dividends. So you're getting your own money back, and you're losing NAV. So I'm sitting on the sidelines, but I'm going to going to watch it pretty closely and just remember the nav on each of these funds that do options it changes daily based on whether they had a win or a loss now they mightn't have sold their position or bought their position yet 
but it's updated daily to reflect the current market data. So your nav is always right at that point in time. The only time we will see um, a physical change, and that will be to cash one way or another, is if we've got to buy a position and it costs us a lot of money or we sell yeah. a, a position and we get in a lot of money for that position. But the nav is always in a state of flux. So it'll be interesting to watch it. Yeah, yeah I think I'm going to wait a little bit, see what, what data come up. Yeah. Here, here's, here's something to think about. So this thing is a 40 five dollar stocks okay so let's look at iwmy i'm just using iwmy as an example here's the choice you have so if you own two iwmy two that's about roughly forty dollar okay so so for forty dollars for forty dollars you can buy two iwmy and you will get two dollars right if if this thing doesn't come close if this thing doesn't come close to to a dollar uh, for the whole month, let's say they pay twenty cents, thirty cents, or whatever, but let's say it average out to be a dollar, um, then then it's it's a consideration. But if it's giving me fifty cents at forty five dollars, forty five forty five cent fifty cents is still a lot, but it shouldn't be for a dollar. I might as well just buy Feppy, you know, take a look at Feppy. Feppy for the same price or similar price, only a few dollar, ten dollar more, you can get it for a dollar and a dollar. I I might as well buy you know Chep Q then you know, Chep Q at least give you thirty cents. Uh, you know, not that's Chep P. Might as well buy Chep Q, and at least give me you know thirty eight cents or whatever forty cents, you know for that price. Uh, maybe, maybe Spy Eye. I, I can't think. I'm trying to find something that's closer to the price. Yeah, here's Spy Eye is $50. And maybe Chuppy. Chuppy. What's Chuppy price? Nope, it's too high. Oh, I, I Spy. Oh, oh, you can buy the new one. QQI, I believe. Yeah. Check that out. $50. Yeah. This one here is going to still give you. So that's, that's why we're trying to figure it out. So in the $50 range... In the fifty dollar range, are you gonna give me more than a dollar? Because Feppy set Rec Share Feppy F E P I set the standard. It's the gold standard right now. You know. I don't know. I just like buying buying ETFs with when they they the value is less than twenty dollars because you I can pick up more. More shares yep. versus paying fifty fifty dollars for uh, for one share, and you get more bang for your buck. Right the other way. Oh yeah, like yeah. Uh, ulti. I like ulti. You like ulti? Yeah, me too. I put a lot of money. Yeah, I bought ulti. more today. It's on sale. It's on I sale. I bought two hundred shares today at ulti. <laughs> I went over. I went over my margin. My, my <laughs> but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Um, Here's the, here's the other thing to think about on this, yeah. Camille, yeah. actually, just going through my mind right now. If it's a $50 stock and it's paying a $0.50 cent distribution, yeah. I'm probably okay with that if we have some growth in the share price mixed in with it. Yeah. Because that way I could dictate when I sell some shares if I wanted to and pay the tax on that. So if they did a split, something like that, where you got... <laughs> more of a traditional stock like coca-cola or apple mm -hmm. or microsoft or whatever that pays a dividend even though it's very small if you got some capital growth um and it, and it still paid a decent distribution and, and let's call it 50 cents i'm probably okay with that but i'd want to i'd want to see evidence of that being the case more than two or three months you know but if it pays you know, a 25 or a 30% distribution, even though that's a great distribution for most people, if it has a lot of nav decay to do it on a weekly, then I have a real problem with that. There are better areas for my fund funds. Yeah. And at the moment, it's sort of misty and coney, to be honest, because it's riding the Bitcoin wave 
Um, but they will be interesting, very interesting to watch. Yeah. My whole thesis on them might be wrong. And if that's okay, I'm happy. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, you know, this is... It, it's tough, though, man. It's hard to predict the future. So you just kind of like go with your... You just got to go with the flow right now at the moment. You know what I mean, Matt? It's hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And look, when you and I started this, there were only three or four funds available. Yeah. You know? And, and I sat on them for five months before I made a purchase and watched and looked and listened and learned. And then I made my, my moves and I haven't stopped moving since, mm -hmm. you know, like all up, I own 11 positions in, in this portfolio and three of them are for long-term holds. They're <laughs> not dividend distributions. The other eight are, you know, and, and for those that want to know, it's Clip, Hesley, yeah. um, Coney, um, Misty. What else have I got in there? You own Misty? Oh, and the, yeah. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, so jealous. And the three Defiance funds. Yeah. Oh, and ULTY. Oh, I love... ULTY, I... I threw some money in here today. Uh, I got 200 shares. This, this, I, I just, I still can't believe they pull a dollar in a very short time. Nine days. Yeah. I still can't believe it. So, theoretically, it, it, it could be $2 a month it pays. Mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. Like, I've done two buys on both of those last two, Misty and, um, I'll tell you why. Yeah. I think if Misty keeps going the way it's been going this month since the last dividend announcement, it could pay four, five, or six dollars. Do I think it'll do that? No, but it is possible it'll do it. it it's not unthinkable for it to happen. Yeah. Um, now, the only thing, but, though, I screw up on the purchase. I bought. I didn't. I didn't know that ULTY was going to drop to seventeen dollar and eighty five cents. I have no idea. No idea. I bought it. Yeah. I bought it when it was. It dropped to eighteen dollar, uh, eighteen fifty, something like that. I forgot what the price was. Somewhere around this price. Yeah. So, so I had no idea. So, uh, if I knew it, it would. Well, I didn't know the entire market was going to drop like this. If I knew, I would have hold off in the afternoon and buy it. Um, but you know, for me, I don't have. I don't have access to computer all the time. So. Whatever I see my phone, I saw my phone. I was like, oh, like I gotta, I gotta buy it real quick. So I was like, rush to the bathroom. I was like, here you go, I'm gonna buy it. And um, yeah, but I love it. You know, I don't, I love these kind of fun, man. It's just another, another opportunity to get a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just crazy, man. But, the blueprint is there. Like it's yeah. easy to generate income. It's easier. To generate income because there's so many portfolio so think about it i mean it's going to take time because you're not throwing a lot of money in there if you're just throwing a thousand dollar five thousand here three thousand there or one thousand or five hundred dollars it didn't matter what you throw in there but in time man one of these days i gotta i gotta track down this walmart kid i gotta figure out where he live and stuff like that and i'm gonna yeah, ask him to come thing. huh it's the thing now yeah. now we've got so much choice yeah and, and, and some of them are paying really well, you know, around 60%, which is historically what Tesla's done, yep. okay? Um, you think about it. If you didn't want some NAV depletion that, that we're getting at the moment in Tesla, you could either hold your position or sell your position in Tesla, move it into something else that doesn't have the same amount of NAV depletion, yeah. so you're restoring, for want of better words, or you're maintaining your capital position and you're still going to get depending on the one you buy that 50 to 60 percent distribution it's just nuts like if i wanted to be in and out of stocks daily that's yeah. what i would do i would look at the charts and I, I i would make my decisions based on charts rather than the underlyings 
you know, I, I, I think that's, that's a really interesting proposition for somebody that wants to sit at their computer and do that all day. It's not for me. I'm not that kind of investor. Um, but I'm not passive by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm normally sleeping when your market's open. Yeah, I don't know how and you I do still it. You probably don't sleep at all. Work. And I still managed to make it work for me. <laughs> you know, so... Yeah. I th it, it really is an interesting proposition. Yeah. Oh, I totally Just say you're making it. money while you sleep. <laughs> yeah, he literally, yeah, he literally made money while he sleep. <laughs> yeah, quite literally, except I lost money while I slept last night. <laughs> It means seeing the amount. Yeah. You want to show that to people? I don't care. Uh, we should have started with that, but I played my music already. Um, it's all I, right. It's no big deal. Yeah, we'll talk about we'll talk about it again. Um, I, I I totally forgot about Matt because you posted in a different section. I went to the portfolio. So today we were supposed to do the portfolio review, but the people who submit me the portfolio, they're not in Discord. So if they're not in Discord, we're not able to do the review. And uh, so uh, next time, no rush. Uh, so next Thursday, uh, we do a portfolio review. Sunday, we have, uh, you know, Sunday, my live stream. And we we do link up every, t every day at around five, six o'clock when I come back from, from work. Uh, we would link up in Discord. That's where we hang out. The Khmer community hang out in Discord, and that's when we talk about investment and all that stuff. Um, you're always more welcome to hang out. You know, the part that I would share you, just come out and watch and, and, and see how we do it. Why we do these things. Why do we pick the fun we pick? And it's not me, it's a whole group of people. Now, they all do their own. No one taught, no one telling anybody what to do. Uh, you know, this is not a, this is not a, you know, we're going to try to get rage scheme or trying to get your money. No, it's your portfolio. It's your journey. It's not my, it's my portfolio. It's my journey. And uh, so, yeah, we're just saying these are all the, these are, these are our journey. And it's a collection of journey that all the people hang out in here. And we're talking about high yield dividend and it's working. It's working. That this is the only thing I, I share with you for those who's new. Take the moment, take the moment and take out your privilege card out and stop asking questions and just just listen. If you just take the time and listen to what we're doing, you're gonna find out that, you're gonna find out that it's, it, you, you may actually wanna change your, uh, your investment style strategy you may have to come on a different thesis you know that's you know but you don't have to you just do whatever you want to do it's your it's your choice in the day but i'm telling you man we all we kind of figured out we kind of figured out how to make money now and we're not we're not, we're not going back and it's just crazy that that uh, that there's people out there still still kind of doesn't believe in this stuff you know and uh, no, I, I don't care if you believe it or not, but hating on it, that's even worse, man. Right. Tesla's up in, after hours. Oh, hey, thanks, Robert Smith. I appreciate it. Robert Smith, do you have a YouTube channel? I think, I thought I saw somebody with your picture. Or you used their picture. Right. Yeah. Okay, hey, guys. Uh, it's Friday. Uh, it's uh, Thursday night. We're... We didn't get a chance to talk about tomorrow uh, uh, setup. My account log off, so I can't talk for my portfolio. But tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna rebalance my portfolio a little bit. Uh, I'm just gonna move stuff around. I, I'm I'm very active in my portfolio. I constantly move things around all the time, and so I'm gonna move things around and uh, set condition. Uh, you know, just to you know set condition for success because number one I spent a lot of money on Tesla uh, and uh, view strong guy you going to view strong guy portfolio uh, he didn't send it to me
I never receive it. White Knight, White Max, I never receive Strong Guy portfolio. I don't know where he posted. Strong Guy? Yeah. I, I, I don't. His where portfolio he portfolio is only one ETF, anyways. It's a VT. Yeah. All I gotta say, all I gotta say, is strong guy's portfolio is fucking goaded, and I love it. Who is strong? I, I don't I don't know where that is. I I don't see it. Do you need Do you need me to show you? Do you need me to show you the strong guy portfolio? Yeah, sure. That, yeah, no problem, friend. Give me one second. I don't know what that means. Strong guy portfolio. Is that a name of a person? Yeah, his name's yeah. strong man. Yeah, it's something different in Discord, I think. Is he in the, our Discord? He ain't on our Discord? Maybe he changed his name. No, I saw it in the portfolio section, I think. Or maybe oh, his yeah. general section? I don't know. Oh, it was earlier really in the day. Tell me the timestamp so I can go to it. No. Not under investing mistakes either. <laughs> okay, so. That'd be funny if it wasn't that. So. What's so special about his portfolio? <laughs> Just give me a quick summary. I mean, we're about to shut down anyway. It doesn't matter. What, what's so special about it? Oh, he he has this one ETF that owns the whole entire market. It is it is a beautiful product. What's the name of the ETF? VT. V. VT. VT. Yeah, VT. Okay. Well, VET is Vermilion Energy. No, no, VT like V. And like T. The total value. World DAX index. Yeah, it's right there. Alright, what about it? This owns every single company in the globe, Kramer. This this is this is a powerful tool for income. Remind me of uh just the initial look at it, remind me of SCHD in some way. No, yeah. this is better. This is better than SCHD Kramer. This owns this owns companies in Djibouti. Well, well, yeah, of course. SCHD doesn't own like that. This thing own. You saying this thing own the world? Yes, SCHD is a U.S. targeted fund. Yeah. It's, this it's, yeah. owns countries. This owns companies in every single index in every single world. The only thing it does not own is some China and some Saudi Arabia. But it do, it does own it does own China via to the Hong Kong exchange as you can see there with ten cents, mm -hmm. ten cents crypto number. It's got a dividend of two yeah. percent. It, yeah, it's pay uh, almost two percent dividends and it's a quarterly pay though, not monthly. Um, it has yeah. a dividend growth of twelve percent. That's pretty good. It's been growing. Yeah, it's been growing, but. Yeah, it's paying two percent. I don't have any issue with that. What's wrong with that? Somebody, somebody don't like it. I love SHD. I, lo I love, I love all dividends. It's just that, you know, eventually, what do I do with my twenty thousand dollars a month? I'm gonna own, I'm gonna own all these guys, you know, because I'm gonna diversify it, you know. Uh, so I have no problem. Yeah, I have no problem taking a look at this. I, I you said two percent, two percent a year. On the dividend? Yeah. No, no, it's yeah. good. It's twelve percent. But it's still two percent, right? Yeah, it's, it's a two percent. Two dollars thirteen the last twelve months. A half a percent every three dollars. months. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's too low. That's a thirty. That's too low for me. Yeah, I, I I like this one. I like it's IWM. You know all the. I, I I just call the SCHD crowd fund the, the group of fund that pay quarterly, and they they balance between growth and yet generate some form of income, uh, a dividends income, and uh, so those three. Every time I see those three, I always think of SCHD quarterly, uh, you know, three percent yield of dividends, and has growth. The most important thing is growth. That's what makes SCHD. This is why. <laughs> If if I have five million dollar, I don't need to buy anything else. I just buy SHD and call it a day. But I don't have five million dollars. Okay, so I have to build the five million. So this is why SHD is so beautiful. 
It's the growth. It's one of the fun. I gotta, I gotta open Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab has a, uh, has a, uh, a fun index that show breakdowns even better. Um, they, they actually show the dividend growth. And when you see the dividend growth, maybe Yahoo has it. Um, and and when you see the dividend growth chart, the, it's it's just unbelievable. You know, that's to me is the strength of SHD. It's not it's not the growth. It's not the, the it's not the stock value. It's not the dividend yield. It's the dividend growth. You buy something in there, it's it it grew every single year. That that's unbelievable. It it promised dividends uh, every single year at a higher rate than the year before. You can't beat that. You you know so that's why I like it. So there you go, SHD fanboy out there. Now you hear from me. I I actually like SHD. So. In case you did not. Hey, know. Have you, have you looked at Have you looked at uh, the DG? Oh, oh, one. How you how you spell that one? It's it's right there. It's right there. If, if you just go back to the Yahoo Finance page, yeah. and then and then you like people also watch. Oh, D G O. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they said the, the, the exactly what I was talking about. Y, uh, y W M. I just mentioned earlier. V I G V U. Uh, you know. The, the problem with the, the only the only issue I have right now, like. I don't have any problem with SPY, VU, QQQ. I would love to own all of them. Not only I want to own all of them, I want to trade all of them, option trade with them. But the reason- Well, Kramer, Kramer, guess, that, guess yeah. what, guess what? Yeah. You know, you do know, you do know that VT has every single one of these and you can you can do options yeah. on VT. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I want to own them. Totally, totally, 100%. Hey, well, okay, well, have you have you looked have you looked at have you looked into box spreads yet? I don't know what that is. You have to tell me what ETF that. It's not it's not an ETF. It's it's an option type. It's an option types contract. Box. Yes. Yes. No, yes. The box spread. No, I that's that's very foreign to me. You know, I just learned how to do option trading like only like a month ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm new. I don't know if you saw any of the video of me option trading. I learned how to do option trading in January when Claude told me how to do it. And I stopped doing it. I stopped doing a little bit here and there. With it. Uh, I just do cover call. So my cover call strategy, I just do cover call and buy put. Those are the only two things I've done so far. I would love to own VU and do option trading on VU. But you know how I'm going to get money to buy VU? My my income fund, my ETF income fund, when I made twenty thousand dollars a month or ten thousand dollars a month. So when when me and my girl travel to Bali and stuff like that, we're not going to spend all ten thousand dollars a month because she has her own income, I have my own income. So what's going to happen is we're using this money to travel, and um, and whatever left over, you know, like we're going scuba diving when we go to Australia, wherever, uh, whatever money left over, I will probably end up taking that money and buy food. You know, and and buy buy all the funds I always want to own, but I can't own it because I don't want to spend my cash money. If that's the two choice you have, it two choice you have with with buying any any growth fund or any fund at all. It doesn't matter what it is. Two choices: either you use your salary money, your paycheck money from your paycheck, or you use your dividend money. That's it. One or two. Now, some people have a rich uncle, they can use their rich father, rich uncle, but either you use your salary money or your dividend income, or well, I, I guess when you say four, your rich uncle, and then, or you have to sell your stock, you have to sell something, sell your motorcycle, sell your house, sell your liver, you have to sell something to buy, those are the four items, that's it. But it really comes down for me, it's the dividends part. I, I get dividends, I'm gonna use that money to buy Vu buy all these guys, man. I would love to do option trading on Vu. Oh my God, okay. look at this. $473 option trading. If you put a strike price, let's say 10%, let's say at $500. Oh, Vu is not really that good. And compared to QQQ. <laughs> this is the first time I look at Vu. <laughs> Never mind, take it back. <laughs> It's not like it's not like an NVD. 
No, I would love to own. Oh no, Nvidia, Nvidia. Well, like, well, ammo. I got, I got another, I got another ETF for you if you want. Yeah, yeah. Since, let's see. And, and since you can't afford to do cover calls, yeah. it's a lot of capital to do on the spot. But, but, but the great guys at Global X can do it for you. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love Global X. You talking about QYLD? No. Mm. No, nope, no, nope, that's a different fund. QOD is a QOD is the Nasdaq 100. Yeah. That's just that's just the 100. percent That's just 100 stocks of the composite, which they just run cover calls on. But this, what I posted in your live show text chat, uh-huh. is XYLD. Oh yeah, see, yeah, yeah. This is cover calls on the spy in Pacific. I used to own. I used to own this XYLD, but I consolidated. Uh, yeah, I love this one. Matter of fact, I let me see. I, I bought it in October, so how much it costs now? In October, yeah, in October I bought it when it was thirty-eight dollar. Yeah, somewhere around that part. I bought it in October this month. And uh, but the reason I sold out, I sold all the Global X because I consolidated to buy uh, uh, to buy QQY when QQY came out. QQY came out, I I consolidated because it went up. I bought it thirty-eight and it went up to like forty. And, and I don't have a lot of share. When I when I open a position, I only open like one, two, three, or five shares. I think Global X, I only had like five shares at a time, and I just consolidated all my all my fund into QQY. That's why I got a thousand share of QQY. But I will definitely own it again. Yo, know, I love it, man. I'm trust that's, me. Uh, what, that, that's those mid tiers. Uh, yeah. I mean, like eleven percent maybe for the year. No. Yeah, they pay. They pay. 10% year, 30, 30 yeah, cents, that's why I like about 30 cents. 0.9, yeah. Yeah. 0. 0.9. Oh, boat. So it's like that. Andrew, Andrew Brown mentioned boat. Oh, lion, lion. He's speaking our language. For those who don't know this, me and lions, yeah. we one thing we both have in common, we both love shipping. Um, and, and at one point I own all kinds of shipping company. Uh, I will own the shipping company again. I will. That's that is the one. There's there's one thing I will own is shipping. Uh, so, <laughs> Lion, do you own both the, the ETF for global shipping? I own basically the uh, holdings themselves. Yeah. yeah because you, I like to uh, to play the percentage weight. Yeah, you own you own this. Yes. Yeah. Uh, S- his SBLK, SFL. I like SFL. These two, I like. Yes. I like them a lot. Uh, yeah, SFL is my biggest holding that yeah. I hold for more than twenty years. Oh my God! You were the heyday of the shipping. You. you yes, I'm. Uh, I'm very old timer. Yeah. Oh, the than, yeah, twenty years. Favorite. You know, so Front you, line. you own mm. shipping when when shipping was at its apex. It was like it was like owning owning shipping is like owning uh, crypto. Yes, uh, back yeah. then it was crazy. Yeah, it was it, very volatile. Yep. Now the reason I know a lot about shipping because my roommate in college, his father owned shipping company, and uh, so we talk a lot mm-hmm. about shipping. And uh, so when I go to Singapore, I'm definitely gonna go visit him. I want you know just talking about shipping, man. It's just now th- that they're not public company, you can't buy it, but they're a private company. But so I learned a lot about shipping, and plus I'm in the military, so I just been I've been on ship a long time, so I spent a lot of time on water, and uh, in on, in sea and just watching ships, you know, going by, you know, and and so it just it's it's ama- especially when you go to port, oh man, when our military ship come in, and we think we're big, wait until you see the shipping company, <laughs> and like, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> It's exciting. I know. Yeah, it is yeah, exciting. Oh, I love it. I love it seeing them, you know. And and some of these guys, man, they have a lot of fun. So when the two ship pass, but people don't understand sometimes, uh, especially when military ship, you know, like when we come close by to them, uh, you know, I love watching them. They would sometimes they have some dancing, you know, like some some of the. I, I guess I can't say it's PG, so we, you know. But I'm just saying on the ship, on the ship, you know, you got the the, the European European people having fun, you know. They just having fun, uh, just flashing us military guys, <laughs> and we just standing there, and we're like, "Oh, did you take a picture of that? Did somebody take a picture of that?" 
that you know because they got they got girls on those ships. They got a lot of girls on those ships, and every time the military go by, they they would honk. They would like let us know that we you know they they, they go up, they come out and they just wave at us, put sign, they put banner up and stuff like that. We love America, and they would one 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 lady put a put a, her email address. I mean, there's five thousand guys on my ship, five thousand dudes, and she put her email address out. She like contact me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss it. I miss those days. Shipping is fun, man. Shipping is fun. Now, I, I can't imagine. I, I can't imagine working in the shipping, cruise line, and stuff like that, and um, and the shipping container because, but mm -hmm. it, it is. It is just. I don't know. It's just. It's just a fun atmosphere. All right, guys. So I wish I can. I can go on and talk for forever, but I gotta get some sleep. And uh, I'm glad to see all of you. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for the tip, uh, Foo Hot with XYLD. I actually know about XYLD. I'm not very familiar with, um, well, I just blank out all the one that you just told me earlier. But, you know, those are fun. I'm gonna expand out. You know, once, my YouTube channel is gonna change after 2025 because I'm getting $10,000 a month. I'm secure, I'm good. And what I'm gonna do with that money while I'm still working, by that time, I'm gonna do the transition trying to get out uh, you know and actually uh, go into retirement mode and, and just leave them leave the job I'm gonna take on my uniform and leave work and completely but when I do that uh, I'm gonna start buying some of these I'm gonna start buying like some funds I always want to buy like I don't know I can't think of like funds I always want to own like I always want to own Hershey I always want to own ketchup I always want to own AMD uh, I always want to own Sun Microsystem, you know, like there's certain company I just want to own just because these are the company I'm familiar with, I grew up with, you know, like Western Digital, you know, uh, I want to own, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of, you know, I want to put some money in there, not not a lot, but, you know, I want to learn how to invest my portfolio too, you know, like I'll give you an example, I'm going out of tantrum here, here's a, here's a trend, trend line, I'm not a trend, I'm going to show you uh, is it market mover? Top gainer. Like for example, here's a top gainer for this week. Here's a top gainer for this whole month. You know, I want to take a look at roots. Like I want to take a look at S O U N. Like uh, Kathy would love root and S O U N. And so. so um. Um, Kramer, like, just just be careful as as you get into like these type of things. Yeah. You gotta know it's, there's gonna be a lot of, a lot of orphan biotechs, as in like one or two drugs, and if they get canned via through the FDA, they 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 get absolutely crushed. I have no idea what you just said. Explain um, one more time, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah, no problem, Kramer. I do I do appreciate the content, by the way. Thank thank you for staying on here. Yeah. Um. Let me load but, the bar uh, so I can understand you. Yeah, no problem. But as you get into like the one month mass gainers, you're gonna yeah. notice a lot of biotech forms uh -huh. that only have like one or two drugs, and if they do not get approved, it's gonna it's gonna tank like ninety nine percent. Oh, when they request for like new capitals, you know. Kind of, kind of, yes, yes, you will have capital raises in the biotech uh -huh. foam, but, but you have to remember, Kramer, these, these are biotech companies, they have to get, they have to get their drugs approved by the FDA. Oh, okay, and I understand, they, you're talking get, about the actual rejected, product, you're talking about the product to get can. approval, not, not the stock, but the product, not SEC, yeah. but FD, the US, the, uh, the, the, yes. the, 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 the science people, the medical people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the medical people said no, it's going to go down. John Brown's mentioning, too, in your live show text chat about the drugs pipelines. This okay. will matter, too, if when you go into biotech analyzation. It also will matter, too. It's yeah. a thing called platen cliff. Yeah. Um, once you have your patents rolled, you will get a tank. You just, you tank. If you look up, like, if you look up, um, Miles Bird Squid. Uh-huh. That's I'd be like the best example at the moment to see like Pat and Cliff dive. Okay. I, if you I, understand in that, you have I to can give me a ticker number. If, if I, you want me to look it up, I 
Yeah, give me one second. Yeah, I, yeah, I can give you my own bridge squid. Take I'm just not really a biotech investor, so I don't really know how these odds attack in my head. No, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be a biotech investor either, but I want to dab into it like a, a, a all around YouTuber. I want to be mm -hmm. an all around YouTuber, be able to talk about different type of funds other than just income. Now, because my income fund is, is, is the soul of my money. That's where it come from. And so, because I now have money to, I have money to buy these things. So, so when people talk about it, you know, like, you know, I meet a lot of new people all the time. They're like, hey, I'm thinking about owning Disney. Uh, I, have, I have no vested interest in owning Disney, but they want to own Disney. So I need to do some research on it and, uh, and look at it and study it and maybe potentially own. Well, Disney is a bad example, but let's say Hershey's Chocolate. Every, no, everybody want to own Hershey's Chocolate. It's a good, good company. But some people love it. They're willing to put their life saving on it. And I, I'll, I'll buy one a few shares so I can see what's going on and track it and find out and learn more about the company. And, uh, but then, then you know, see if there's any growth and then that. But now I'm coming from a position that where I'm actually able to talk because I, that I'm, you know, from owning something, you know. Um, it, this is something I'm thinking about like two, three years down the road. I'm not talking about now. My goal now is to generate income. I can't do anything if I don't have income. It doesn't matter. If I don't have income, it doesn't matter what my plan is. It doesn't work because I don't have any income to, to buy something. That's, that's, that's really what this whole YouTube, this is what we, that's, that's the old emphasis of what we're trying to talk about. I'm sorry, go ahead and, uh, Fuhat. Do you well, post it somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, I just in you in your live show text chat. I just I gave you, uh, I gave you a biotech ETF. Okay. That would that would help you get started in this, but of course, but of course, it's gonna be way down the line with your income, of course. Yeah, yeah, not not anytime soon, right now. You know, like like sometime, you know, in the future, I want to learn to it. IBB. All right, let me let, let's look at that. Up. Just interesting conversation. I be I share biotechnology ETF. Yeah, that's probably a safer way to do it. <laughs> a very safe way. Just buy the I share, you know, BlackRock biotechnology ETF. So this way you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you don't have to worry about you know single stock failure. You know, is that what yeah. you're trying to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because if you notice here, the weighting is more weighted to um region farm uh region pharmaceuticals yeah. uh you you won't only get the high flyers like eli lilly or the uh or Zempic people mm -hmm. as the Zempic people is located in uh denmark they're on the denmark exchange uh mm -hmm. novo disc are you are you from europe no no i'm just for minnesota I just, this is my axis is a bit is a bit thick and i'm a bit sick still oh well, you you because you know a lot. That's why I tell you, that's interesting. Wow, I, wow, fool! Why, why, why do you wait so long to to talk to me? You wait until the end when I'm about to shut down. <laughs> I, I've been hung over all day. I've been hung over all day and had a headache. Okay, <laughs> okay, brother. Uh, hey, we we do this all the time. So you're more welcome to come to Discord tomorrow. Uh, talk about this, um, and. Uh, but I I got I got to log off now. All right. uh, for sure, dude. For sure. Yeah. Hey, good to see you, good meeting, man. everybody. Take care. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Have a good night or good day. I think your time. Yeah.